The Tennessee trio has put the volunteers in the chase for a national title. Casey Clawson has avoided the sophomore jinx while leading the Vols to a number six national ranking. Travis Stevens has put his name among the best running backs ever in ball history. And big John Henderson has been slowed by injuries, but still a force in the middle. Today, Tennessee heads north to its neighbor in Lexington. Kentucky's Jared Lorenzen is back putting up big numbers as the Wildcats look to spoil Tennessee's run for a title. Lexington, Kentucky, Commonwealth Stadium, Southeastern Conference football. The sky is blue, the grass is still green, and the temperature is September-like in the Commonwealth. Welcome, everybody, to JP Sports. David Steele along with Charles Davis. We're glad to have you for today's Southeastern Conference showdown, a big rivalry matchup between Kentucky and Tennessee. This rivalry goes back to 1893 been some great games through the years. Tennessee has dominated most recently. The Vols have a lot to play for today, Charles. So does Kentucky. Yeah, they really do. The Tennessee Volunteers have, a, have an opportunity to still play for the Southeastern Conference title, as well as a berth in the BCS, and potentially a Rose Bowl shot, a shot national title. For Kentucky, they're not going to go to a bowl, so today is their bowl game, and they really want to put the rivalry back into this game. Well, a big senior day celebration prior to the game this afternoon. A lot of emotion on the field for the Kentucky Wildcats, but I tell you, they've got their hands full with a Tennessee team that features one of the premier running backs in all of college football. Yeah, and who would have thought that going into the season? Travis Stevens is a fifth-year senior that many expected to be beaten out this year by a stellar freshman recruiting class, but he never let it happen. Worked hard in the offseason, has put up big numbers, over 1,000 yards rushing so far. He is now putting his name up with some of the greats in Tennessee history in running the football, and here's why. Shows a burst, some power. He may look like a little guy, but he can go up inside the tackle, and then he can show a little bit of wiggle and has the speed to break it a long way. When you think Tennessee running backs, you may think Reggie Cobb, you may think Aaron Hayden, you may think James Stewart, but now you have to think Travis Stevens also. No question, the senior from Clarksville, Tennessee, has had a tremendous senior year for the Tennessee Volunteers. Kentucky also a football team that can move the football. They have one of the most unique players in all of college football and quarterback Jared Lorenzen. I love that word, David, unique, because he is. This is a guy who last year weighed nearly 300 pounds by the time the season ended. He slimmed down, worked hard in the offseason, Season, but never lost any arm strength. Lost 40 to 45 pounds, but look at the gun he still has. Hitting Derek Smith and Derek Abney, number 12. And just when you think all he can do is throw it, he shows some great moves, some nimble feet of a guy who weighs about 175 pounds. Ran the option for 61 yards against the University of Georgia. Last week, Jared Lorenzen, six touchdown passes. Some people voted him National Player of the Week, David. Big week last week, looking to build upon it this week against arch rival, the Tennessee Volunteers from Knoxville. And yes, there will be some defense played today in uh, the Commonwealth also. In fact, the Tennessee Volunteers feature last year's Outland Trophy winner, Big John Henderson, number 98. And Kentucky has an outstanding individual talent on the defensive front in junior Dennis Johnson. We'll be back in just a moment. Just a beautiful afternoon in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. It couldn't be more idyllic for college football today. We're not used to this kind of weather in Lexington this late in November. And I know that Dave Baker, uh, who lives right here in Lexington, Kentucky, is as surprised as any of us about the conditions. Dave, how you doing down on the field? David, great. We appreciate you bringing this weather up from the Sunshine State. <laughs> One thing we're going to be concentrating on this afternoon is what the Kentucky offense is able to do or not do. A big part of that is going to be Andre Lott in the Tennessee secondary. Coordinator John Shavis says that Lott will start if UT opens in a nickel. He's going to play him as the nickel back today. He's been bothered by a strained left hamstring, and he's going to do his best to spot Andre Lott. And you can bet when he's out there on the field, he's going to be doing a little spying on a kid from Kentucky named Derek Abney. He is first in the Southeastern Conference in all-purpose yardage. Chavis said if everybody on the Kentucky team competed like Derek Abney, the Wildcats wouldn't be looking at just one or two wins this season. But Abney's a kid that has to make yardage after the catch if the Cats are to have a chance this afternoon, David. All right, thank you. Dave Baker will be checking with Dave throughout the afternoon on just a, a fabulous afternoon. Guy Morris, the head coach at Kentucky in his first year, he took over for Hal Mummy last February and brought in a lot of new coaches, only a couple of coaches retained off of Mummy staff. And Philip Fulmer, certainly one of the most successful coaches in all of college football in terms of winning percentage. He is the number one active 
coach in college football. In his 13th year as head coach at UT. Kentucky won the toss, and the Wildcats will receive the football. Alex Walls will kick it off for the Volunteers. Walls, a junior from Bristol, Virginia. Yeah, just over the state line, David, from Tennessee, about four miles away from receiving in-state tuition as a former walk-on. Ended up having to pay out-of-state tuition initially, but earned a walk-on after a stellar year last year, which granted him All-America status. Yeah, a scholarship for this young man was, uh, <laughs> was a big deal. Derek Abney waiting. And Abney grabs it at the 11-yard line. Down he goes at the 24-yard line where Kentucky will have the football. First down and 10. Derek Houston may be stopped for the Tennessee Volunteers. Just underway from Lexington, Kentucky, Jared Lorenzen, the big left-handed quarterback, the sophomore from Fort Thomas, Kentucky, has had an interesting year. He was the guy last year as a freshman under Hal Mummy. He lost his starting job early in the season, but won it back in the game against LSU when he almost brought the, the Wildcats back to victory here in Lexington. And he'll work out of the shotgun formation with five receivers out in pass routes. Well, knocked away, intended for Tommy Cook. And Greer makes the stop, the play for Tennessee. Let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineup. Eric Smith, uh, the key to that receiving core for the Kentucky Wildcats. Great leadership by Derek Smith. Abney, the leading pass catcher. Tommy Cook coming on very strong of late as well. Up front, Antonio Hall, a sophomore, getting better and better on that Wildcat offensive line, which has had a lot of changes throughout this season due to injury. Artus Pinner now the running back and Pinner running it up inside across the 30 to about the 32-yard line for Kentucky. Eddie Moore made the tackle for Tennessee. And let's take a look at the volunteer defense. Well, this is a strong group with Hainsworth and Henderson inside. Overstreet, though, is the emotional leader of that front four for the volunteers. Dominique Stevenson, the leading tackler for the Tennessee defense. Burnett and Moore also solid. And in the secondary, they can't say enough about Rashad Baker and what he has meant to this football team. He's picked off three passes already this season. Yeah, former wide receiver that they flipped over last year when they really needed help in the secondary, and he gets, be gets better and better each week, David. Kentucky tried to set up the screen. Here goes the big fella. And the crowd loves it in Lexington as big Jared Lorenzen barrels near midfield. Bernard Jackson brought him down. Yeah, and what we're going to see here, they're trying to set up the screen as you described, David. We talked with Brent Peace, their offensive coordinator, yesterday. He said, we're going to have to be a finesse team. We're going to have to fool them a lot and try and use Tennessee's defensive team speed against them. The screen didn't materialize, but Jared Lorenzen has learned to tuck the ball and go when there's an opportunity. And when you weigh 265 pounds and get into the secondary, not a lot of guys that really want to come and take you on all day long. On first down, the Wildcats running it up the middle. Pinner again. And uh, their offensive line, Charles, doing a good job on this uh, initial drive, moving uh, Tennessee off the football. Yeah, and this offensive line, you know, this is exactly what they needed to start off with, David. Artus Pinner is their inside runner. He's a guy who has not, usually doesn't start because Chad Scott's their speed guy and their game breaker. But Pinner knows how to run between the tackles and has put up big numbers against pretty good defenses. Last year against Florida, over 120 yards rushing. So he likes to play in big games. So we'll see how things go along for him today. On second down, they swing it to Penner. Oh, he fumbled it and dropped it incomplete. He had a little turf in front of him, too, Charles. Yeah, he had a little daylight in front of him because what they did was Kentucky had managed to outflank Tennessee without using a lead blocker. All it is is just a, a simple a simple swing pass out into the back, and they blocked the corner. Great job by the tight end, knocking the guys inside, and Pinner had a little bit of space out front. Derek Smith, the tight end, was able to block inside. Good job sealing the defensive end for Tennessee. Wildcats 11th in the conference in third down conversions out of 12 plus. 
And Lorenzen trying to break that streak. Underhanded shovel. And the pass is ruled incomplete, so he did get the ball out of his hand before his knee hit the ground. Part of Jared Lorenzen's strength, and his strength knowing how to get rid of the ball, and also just the physical strength he has, because he should have been sacked on this play. First guy from Tennessee, Henderson, that looked like Bernard Jackson, Rashad Morris, excuse me, 58, missing. Overstreet clinging on to him, Henderson getting a shot at him, and then finally Lorenzen able to get rid of it underhanded. Remember, you don't have to throw it overhand for it to be a pass downfield. Aesthetics don't count. And the Wildcats go uh, gambling in the first quarter. And why not? This is their bowl game, David. They haven't beaten Tennessee in 16 straight games. No sense holding anything back today. Lorenzen has Smith wide open. Derek Smith to the 28-yard line of Tennessee. And Golden made the play. But Smith is still on the field. And that's going to be a big concern for Kentucky because we met with Derek Smith yesterday, David, and what a delightful young man. A super football player, very articulate, you know, a guy very measured in his thinking. And this is why they love him here at Kentucky the most of all, though, is the way he can get open. The tackle was on the knee, a clean tackle. But, you know, those things are going to happen. We just hope this young man is not hurt seriously. A fourth down play by Guy Morris, and then the tackle was made by Rashad Baker, the free safety, taking out Derek Smith. But, you know, we hope that he's going to be okay. I mean, you don't want to see anyone hurt in this game and so early because the excitement for the crowd of Kentucky, they were into the game early because of the, what the Wildcats have done. you got to credit Guy Morris going for it on fourth down. Why not? There's nothing to hold back on today. He, he told us on a conference call, and Brett Peace, offense coordinator, said, there's nothing for us to hold back now. Let's let it all hang out. Let's go after it, and let's go after Tennessee. No sense waiting on anyone. This would be a blow, though, Charles, because oh, this huge. young man is uh, Emotional he is the heart and soul of this uh, uh, Kentucky offensive team. And, and just remember, he's an underclassman. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not a senior, and this is senior day, but their leadership, the best leaders on any football team come from the guys who make the plays. And Derek Smith has been making plays since he set foot on campus at Kentucky. We only hope, as we said before, that he's okay. Because this is exactly what Kentucky needed for an open. They need to put Tennessee back on their heels and get their attention. You know, when you think about your Tennessee, you've beaten the team 16 straight times. The last five times you've played, you've scored over 50 points. you got to make sure you get Tennessee's attention. Kentucky's done that, and Derek's up and walking off. I hope we can see him back in the game. Well, Derek uh, wouldn't guarantee a victory for Kentucky yesterday in our talk with him, but he did say that he predicted the Volunteers would know they had been in a battle, well, regardless of who wins the ball game, after the conclusion of this one. And Smith uh, shaken up early. And uh, such an integral part of this Kentucky offense. But see, he is moving under his own power, so that is a good sign for the Wildcats. Look at this drive. Kentucky has taken the ball just beyond its 20-yard line. And the big fourth down conversion keeps the drive alive. Now well, there's movement on the offensive line, the front line of Kentucky. I think 71 Paris. Yeah, Josh Paris. A bit over eager, and the Wildcats have been nicked uh, by these kinds of plays all year. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. You think back at some of their games, Charles, when they had opportunities to win, a play like this has kept them uh, has kept out of them a lot of positive situations. It has. It's kept them from getting over the top in a number of ball games. When you look at some of the games recently that they've lost, lost by three to Mississippi State, made a bunch of mistakes down the stretch that hurt them. You know, tied with Georgia at 29. They get now near the goal line. Madney gets separated from the ball. Georgia the recovers goes down and scores. They can't make mistakes in a game like this today. Well, it's first and 15. Lorenzo rifles it. It is caught by Kelly. And the Wildcats have a first down inside the Tennessee 15-yard line. I'm loving this plan that Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator, and Guy Morris, the head coach, have put together for Kentucky. A lot of misdirection. All right, getting Lorenzen out of the pocket a little bit, giving you know, having him throw from different angles so Tennessee doesn't know where he is at all times. Normally a left-handed quarterback, you don't want to roll into his right because that's a difficult throw. But Jared Lorenzen for a 265-pounder has great body control, was able to whip back around and throw a strike to Anthony Kelly for another first down for Kentucky. Yeah, he might only be able to throw it 50 yards. Yeah, right that, that, that cuts him down from, you know, from, from a high of 75. Oh, the shovel pass. Tennessee is all over it. A big hit made by the Volunteers, Kevin Burnett. 
almost uh, there to, to intercept the pass, which is tough to do on, on a quick shovel like that. Yeah, on the shovel, the old Utah pass. Remember Lee Gross Cup throwing the old Utah with the whoopee pass? Great job. Fortunately, it's a forward pass, and when the ball comes out, it's not a fumble. But, you know, R2's pinner, able to, did he actually hold on to that, David? He yeah, held he on to it, took a lick. But what I still like about what, what, what Brett Peace is doing is he's showing Tennessee a lot of things, making the defense think instead of just blowing to the ball. The play action has Lorenzen rolling to his left. Nobody open, he'll run it. Lorenzen diving across the five and out of bounds at the Tennessee three-yard line. And it appeared, David, that Tennessee had made a really good defensive play. Kevin Burnett had made the big hit on the last play. This time spoils the pass attempt because they had Dougie Allen coming inside underneath. You'll see Dougie Allen to the right of your screen. Right there, Kevin Burnett knocks him off of his route. That's where Jared Lorenzen wanted to go to the football, but no one accounted for Lorenzen, and he ran it down inside the three-yard line. Great job by him. You see, you see Andre Lott, number 30, looking for a receiver. Well, Lorenzen looking for the first down strike. I think they're going to measure, but he's darn close. Rashad Baker shaking up on the play, the free safety for Tennessee. Well, Lorenzen, is, they're going to measure for the first down. Lorenzen is probably 40 pounds lighter, would you say, than last year? An easy 40 time. pounds. You know, we, 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 we did this game last year, David, as, we, as they measure for the first down, and it is a first down for Kentucky. What a beautiful opening drive for the Wildcats. Jared Lorenzen. Wouldn't admit to it, but, you know, people told us that he weighed over 300 pounds for the Tennessee game last year. He came into camp in shape this year. Guy Morris ran a tough ship in the offseason and got it done. Let's send it down on the field of Dave Baker. Derek Smith walking back to the Kentucky locker room right now. He's got a hip pointer. They're going to try to rub it down, put a pad on it, get the sting out of it, and get him back in. And this is a situation where Jared Lorenzen likes him the most, two guys that have known each other since grade school. Now you might want to look for Chase Hart, the other tight end also. He's been a good target this year. Penner sub submarined at about the two. And it's Hainsworth on the tackle for Tennessee. He has played so well for yep. Tennessee in recent games. And they've needed him to because John, Big John Henderson has had that high ankle sprain, hasn't been at the height of his effectiveness. Albert Hainsworth was a high school All-American that they expected big things from. Didn't get him as fast as they wanted, but they're getting him now. He made the huge play against South Carolina against Andrew Pinnock and made South Carolina kick a field goal and help Tennessee win the game. Second and goal for Kentucky. Play action. Lorenzo with daylight. Oh, he got stood up as he hesitated at about the two-yard line, and Omari Hand stood him up right there. That's a little bit of a surprise, David, because this is where Jared Lorenzen has to remember he is 260 pounds, okay? And if they're letting it all hang out today, you don't hesitate now. Now you go and you use your 260 and you try and run someone over. You know, finesse is not the time now for Jared Lorenzen, although they're trying to run a finesse offense. Now you still got to run it. I don't think you run the football as a traditional running play, David. Maybe a fake inside and run it outside, but they should try and throw here. A critical play for Kentucky. Lorenzen throwing. Abney, touchdown. Penalty flag on the play. And it might be an illegal pick. It's only guessing, Charles, but uh, they yeah. ran the, the pick play with the, the two receivers. And you get a lot of that, but it is rarely called. Uh, you know, I mean, you, it's hard to get Formation, that pick. six men on the line on the offense. No, it's uh, uh, six men on down. the line. It's exactly what Guy Morris, Brent Peace, and even the players told us. They can't make mistakes at critical times in this ball game. There's Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator, his first year at Kentucky. That wipes the touchdown off. Six men on the line. You need seven. So what happened, David, was someone on the formation was, was, did not get on the line of scrimmage, was back off of the line of scrimmage, needed to be on it. You have to know where you need to line up in formations. You wipe out a touchdown pass to Abney, who's had a sensational year. Now let's see if Kentucky can pick themselves back up and give it another shot this drive started back at the 24 yard line and uh, well balanced between the pass and the run for Kentucky third down and goal again touchdown Kentucky
What a great drive for the Wildcats. They take a touchdown away. Undaunted, they come right back with a similar play without the pick, David. Just ran a, sim a slant route inside to Tommy Cook, who has really come on in recent weeks, really developed as a go to another go-to guy for Lorenzen. He has a bunch of them. Touchdown, Wildcats. This game could not have started any better for Kentucky. Seth Hansen, the extra point, and Kentucky, 76 yards on the opening drive. They lead the Volunteers, 7 to nothing. Now let's go to the Hyatt Regency in downtown Atlanta to see who wins the Dodge truck in Huddle House's fantastic football promotion. Here are the five Huddle House finalists who have qualified to draw a key and have a chance to win this beautiful 2002 Dodge Ram quad cab truck. We drew the keys during the pregame show, and now it's time to see which Huddle House customer has the key that opens the door. Contestant number one. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Teresa Spillman of Paragold, Arkansas will be coming home soon with her new Dodge Ram truck. Compliments of Huddle House, the Southeastern Dodge Truck Dealers Association, and Jefferson Pilot Sports. We're back in Lexington on a glorious November 17th. And glad to have you with us on Jefferson Pilot Sports. David Steele and Charles Davis, along with Dave Baker on the sideline in Kentucky has taken the opening kick and marched 76 yards to give the hugely uh, underdog Wildcats uh, a seven-point lead. And what about this, uh, the emotion for the Kentucky Wildcats getting off to such a great start, Charles? Well, it's fantastic for them because they came into the game, you know, they said they believed that they could win, but you have to figure they were hoping that they could win. And now I think they're starting to believe that they could win because Jared Lorenzen is off to a great start, as are his receivers. Great job for Kentucky. They couldn't ask for any more. They used five and a half minutes off the clock. And the Volunteers now getting their first offensive opportunity. Steven Scaldaferri will kick the ball off for the Wildcats. And it's Leonard Scott, eight yards in the end zone, and he'll down it. On the opening drive for Kentucky, David, Jared Lorenzen came out blazing, took him 70-plus yards with pinpoint passes such as those to his old roommate and high school teammate Derek Smith. Unfortunately, Derek was hurt on that play, but we hope to see him back later. Now you take a look at Jared, Jared Lorenzen coming out of the pocket. Brett Peace off his corner, rolls him out, doesn't use his arm that time, uses his legs, ran for a first down inside the three, and then after a penalty, nice slant route to Tommy Cook, the wide receiver, for the, for the initial touchdown for Kentucky. Back to live action on first down. The Volunteers' pass is incomplete. Intended for Will Bartholomew. And Casey Clausen, the sophomore quarterback from Northridge, California. Completing a high percentage of his passes, 63%. So it's second down for the Volunteers. Running the ball carrier in Kentucky. Knocks him down from behind the line of scrimmage. Wiggins leads the attack. Our Chevy starting lineup for the Volunteers on offense. Stallworth, seven catches, three touchdowns in their win against Memphis last week. And the Finlay son and Witten. You'll see a lot of Witten at tight end as well. Offensive line, Fred Weary has been a warrior for Tennessee for four seasons. And he enters that offensive line for the Volunteers. Huge third down, David. Kentucky's emotion could go sky high, and the crowd will really be into it. They can force a three and out here on the Volunteers. Watson dropping. And the pass caught by Graham at the 27-yard line. It'll be about three yards short of a first down. Derek Tatum made the stop for the Wildcats. And we have an injured player, a Kentucky player. We get another look 
Casey Clawson in the pocket. Has plenty of time to throw the ball and delivers it to Bobby Graham, but good tackling by the Kentucky secondary, number 21, Derek Tatum. One-on-one. -on -one. These are the toughest tackles you make in the secondary. And one thing we talked about with John Goodner, the defense coordinator from Kentucky, and he told us how important it was for them to make tackles, not miss them in this ball game. The injured player is Dwayne Robertson, sophomore from Memphis. And uh, this is a very important part of Kentucky's front line. John Goodner, the defensive coordinator, would have to be concerned with uh, the sight of number 63 down on the field. And he did not play against LSU in Georgia because of uh, a knee injury. So you hope uh, that uh, this is not a serious injury for Dwayne Robertson. Let's take a look at that Kentucky Wildcat defense. You see Robertson, uh, one tackle. Derek Johnson, the other. On the outside, Dennis Johnson, a big play man. And so is Chris Demery, the senior. The linebackers, uh, this young guy, uh, undersized uh, in the Southeastern Conference, but just a gutty, gritty little fella, number 33, Chris Gayton. He leads the Wildcat defense in tackles. And uh, safety, Anthony Wajda, second on the team in tackles. Jeremy Bowie. Leonard uh, Burris actually is out to, for today's game and has been replaced by junior Derek Tatum in that Wildcat secondary. A big concern over Dwayne Robertson being down. He's been dinged most of the year. You know, we, we saw him in an early game against Louisville. He got hurt a little bit in that one. Then later on down the road, as you mentioned, he got hurt, I believe, against LSU, David. So he's had some injury problems throughout the year. But when he is on and healthy, he's one of the destructive forces in the SEC on the inside, even as a sophomore out of Melrose High School in Memphis. I know the volunteer fans are saying, how'd this guy get out of state? Well, he's come to Kentucky and played awfully well. See if he's able to make it back today, too. To make matters worse for Kentucky, if uh, Robertson can't go, they lost Ellery Moore, a, a true freshman who was really coming on strong to a torn ACL. And now Robertson, uh, they further deplete their defensive front line. But Robertson moving uh, under his own power for the most part. Perhaps he'll be all right. Let's go back down to the field and Dave Baker. David, extremely hard-hitting game so far over on the Tennessee sidelines. Rashad Baker rolled his left ankle on that last series. That's going to put more pressure on Andre Lott, who's nursing the bad hamstring. Over on the sideline, he's stretching that hamstring. And, Charles, as you know, that's not a good sign on a hot day like this if you can't get an injury like that loosened up. Yeah, that's when you know things are, things are pretty bad for you because it's a perfect day. You shouldn't have any problem getting loose, as Dave said. Derek Abney is the deep man. Great punch by Dustin Colquitt. Abney dangerous, number two in the SEC, almost broke it free. Tennessee trips him up at the 37-yard line. Mark Jones made the tackle. Dave Baker said it's a, it's a hot day, but those of us from the Sunshine State are feeling pretty good right now. Kentucky leading it early. We're back in Lexington. Derek Abney just uh, made a nice 16-yard return on a punt to give Kentucky good field position on their second possession of the afternoon. They lead Tennessee 7 to nothing. Derek Smith, their tight end, back in the ball game. He's been taken care of in the locker room. Nothing doing on first down. It'll be second and nine for the Wildcats. And uh, injuries early today in Lexington. Let's check with Dave Baker again. Big blow for the Kentucky defensive line and their hopes of stopping the balls. Dwayne Robertson, who you mentioned, has been bothered by an injured knee all season long, has re-injured that left knee. They've got it taped up. They're going to take a look at him and see how he can go. But as you see the look on his face, he doesn't look uh, optimistic in terms of getting back in there anytime soon. And Derek Smith back in the game. He's got a pan on that uh, injured hip. And so it's second and about eight for the Wildcats. The pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. I think it was Hainsworth, 92, that might have gotten a piece of it. A strong Tennessee rush, though, disrupting Kentucky's offense. And it'll be third down. Let's take a look at some other scores. In the Southeastern Conference, the Bulldogs have jumped on top of Ole Miss in Oxford. And Clemson scores first against the Gamecocks in Columbia. Ohio State Illinois game is going to be an interesting one. Ohio State lost their quarterback yesterday. Blake Forrest having a heck of a year in the ACC, David. Third down play for the Wildcats. Lorenzen. That is man. Kentucky sends the speed man on this 
Kentucky wide receiving core, and he picks up a lot of additional yardage after making the catch. The Wildcats convert again on third down, Charles. And an excellent route run by Ernest Sims, number three. He ran a route that looked like it was going to be a curl. He ran it on Jabari Greer, number 33, a guy that the Tennessee coaches couldn't say enough good things about the other day on the phone. But he ran inside, and then he spun to the outside. Jabari Greer lost his footing, and Ernest Sims was wide open on the play. And Jared Lorenzen, he may be huge, Dave, but he's got great touch on the ball when he delivers a perfect strike to Ernest Sims for another first down for the Wildcats. Rashad Baker has returned to the Volunteers secondary. On first down, Lorenzen connects to Scott. And uh, Lorenzen is very accurate in this first quarter, throwing the ball for Kentucky. Another one right on the numbers to another receiver. Jared told us yesterday that he really feels like his ability to spread the ball around to a number of different individuals has lifted the morale of this offensive football team. And it's also a part of his maturation as a quarterback and a person. Last year, his big target was Derek Smith, his high school teammate. That's where he wanted to throw the ball each and every time. Beautiful, you know, pass-run ratio for Jared Lorenzen today. But this year, developing confidence in all of his receivers and this paying off for them. A little pump pick. He's got Sims on the corner. Well covered, though. Ernest Sims. Lott was with him step for step. And that was another option on that offense. He wanted to come inside with a screen to the wide receiver. Coming inside on what they call those smash screens or bubble screens, or whatever you want to call it. It's a wide receiver screen coming back to the inside. Tennessee covered it, so he went to the next option over the, up top trying to hit Sims on a fly route. Un unsuccessful, but just shows, David, how he's come along as a quarterback. One option taken away, he goes to another. Yet another third down conversion. Lorenzen wrapped up by Henderson and somehow managed to stay on his feet. Did he lose the ball? It looked like the ball came out of there. And uh, some pushing taking place as emotions flare up in the first quarter in Lexington. But a good job of officiating by not throwing a flag, just breaking it up. You see Henderson, number 98, collapsed the pocket. Now he's got a big grasp. Now Lorenzo wanted to throw the football again as he did earlier when he was wrapped up. He has to be careful about when he does it. Because John Henderson grabbing is a little bit different than the linebacker grabbing you with all that weight. Close to it being a fumble, Rashad Moore battling for the ball with Lorenzen. And the officials could have called a penalty in there for a little extracurricular, but they didn't. Just suddenly they know it's an emotional game today because it's a rivalry game. And look at Kentucky going for it on fourth down and 12. And Lorenzen, little pooch kick. And the big fella had a little bit too much toe on it. And it's not just his fault. His receivers know it's a pooch kick. They've got to get downfield and kill that ball inside the 10-yard line. Not a bad-looking kick for the big fella. Tennessee takes the football. Wildcats lead the Volunteers 7 to nothing. 6-11 to play in the first quarter. Guy Morris has to be thrilled with the way this one has started for the Wildcats and Tennessee with its second possession. They were three and out on their first possession. They haven't uh, given the ball to Stevens yet. Now he does get the call and Kentucky is just dominating the line of scrimmage early in this football game. Pretty much on both sides of the football. Yeah, Jamal great. White made the tackle. Yeah, sorry about that, David. Great job by Jamal White, the linebacker, who they missed for the first couple of games this year because of some academics. He's back in. The, he's been back in the lineup and has done a great job. It's they're really their run stuffing inside linebacker Chris Gate and the other run, the other linebacker. It's only about 200 pounds, 205 pounds. Tougher for him, although he does play with a lot of heart. Nice play. Good job up front by Derek Johnson, number 55, too. And yeah, number 68, Jeremy Caudle is in the line uh, for Kentucky, replacing the injured, Dwayne Robertson. Big hole opens here. Stevens stumbling uh, across the 20 and to the 25-yard line. Someone got him around the ankles, and uh, it might have been Chris Gayton. Cumbie may be back there also. Yeah, Quinn is Cumby, one of their outside safeties. He's coming into the play. It, you know, Travis Stevens made more out of this play than he should have, David, because I thought right there he was going to go down. Kept his balance, stumbled along. Cumby made the final tackle. I guess it was Gaten back in the backfield. He put the, put the ankle move on him. Third down play for the ball. Look out on the corner, number 14, Mike Williams, a freshman corner in the game now for Kentucky. Watson. 
trying to pick up the first down, and it will be very close. Boy, Kentucky is one firing up football team in this first quarter. Well, fans, jpsports.com has the coverage you want. No one knows the Southeastern Conference like JP Sports, and we bring you the information to you online. Tune in each week for previews of upcoming games, broadcast information, many other exciting features. For the inside scoop, log on to jpsports.com. Nice ovation for the Kentucky defense and well-deserved two straight stops of Tennessee without points. The ball goes back to Abney, the very dangerous punt returner. This time a high spiral by Colquitt. A young man with uh, big-time bloodlines in the Tennessee football program. Derek Abney, a fair catch at the 25-yard line. In two weeks here on Jefferson Pilot Sports, the Vanderbilt Commodores, the Ole Miss Rebels, as we wrap up another big season of Southeastern Conference football. Commodores uh, really trying to finish the season strong for their beloved head coach who will not be back uh, next year, Woody Woodenhofer. And Ole Miss may be playing for an SEC Absolutely. title that day, depending on what happens going into that week. Here's a graphic for you, Charles. Well, what you see is a lot of emotion by Kentucky and a good defensive plan by the defense coordinator, John Goodner, limiting the Tennessee offense. Tennessee defense, the first drive, gave up the touchdown. The last drive, a lot better, and they seem to be getting stronger. Nice rush by Constantine Ritzman, number six, forcing Lorenzen out of the pocket. Second and ten. You see Lorenzo setting up in the pocket, Dave, but Constantine Ritzman, number six, who is from Germany, sets him up there. It's good escape by Lorenzo, and he got rid of the ball, so no lost yardage. But the Tennessee rush, they're second in the SEC in sacks. They do come hard all day, so the Kentucky offensive line has got to pass block and protect Jared Lorenzo. And the Volunteers are going to get some pressure on the big fella as he swings it out in the flat to pass cross by Marquez Johnson. Johnson scrambling across the 35 and is finally knocked out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Oh, Brett Peace, show us more, show us more. It was a crack swing pass or a crack screen to his back, Martez Johnson, to the top, to the left of your screen. You'll see Derek Abney right there making the block, number 12 on the corner. Excellent block, Tommy Cook engaged on another defensive back. For those type of plays, you have to have your receivers blocked. Jared Lorenzo directing things, has fully taken over this offense. They are now in his image. On first down, the handoff is to Johnson, running between the tackles to the 46-yard line. A gain of five on first down, and uh, Kentucky will certainly take that. Hey, anytime you get five yards on this Tennessee defense, which came into the game with high, lofty rankings, number two, no, they're number one in the SEC in rushing defense, number seven in the country. Total defense, big-time numbers. They're as good as anyone in the country as far as defense. John Chavis, their defensive coordinator, he knows how to coach it pretty well, too. But right now, Kentucky doing a good job against them. Johnson again running it up the middle. To about the 47, maybe the 48-yard line. Tennessee's defense, you were talking about it. And uh, they have uh, consistently throughout the season from week one until right now been uh, ranked among the top in the country. Yeah, they're, they're about as good as anyone is out there. They don't always get the credit because you always hear about wide receiver you and Casey Clawson on offense. But John Chavis told us the other day on his conference call, hey, we've been playing good defense in Tennessee for a lot of years, and he's right. This year is just another example of it. Tennessee firing across the line of scrimmage, but I think they were drawn. Yeah, Harold Mitchell's getting a busy, having a busy day already as the, as the referee. Dead ball. Illegal snap on the offense. A five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. See, that negates a good play on first down, David. Remember, it's first and, first and five. You know, first down, they got five yards. Nick sights the center. <laughs> now, he's the guy who has to snap the ball. <laughs> you figure he would know it, right? Got drawn off there. And Guy Morris, the, author, the head coach, former O-line coach, 16 years in the NFL as an offensive lineman, too. He knows about line play. Kentucky penalized three times already today. Of the third down conversion, Johnson had broken a free away from a linebacker, or Dougie Allen, rather, and uh, the ball was just a bit overthrown. And another mistake by Kentucky, taking them out of a potential drive. 
the, the you know the, the the penalty on sites the center negated the first down that they gained five yards on change your play calling for Brent Peace made it a difficult throw for Lorenzen they have to take advantage of their opportunities when they can David another good call though by uh, Peace oh you got, you got a, oh third you got down you gotta love the game plan they have out there they've got the kids believing which is the big thing these kids really like their coaching staff here. Glenn Takalak fields an errant snap. Eric Parker at the 19. He'll try and return it. And he is knocked down by Chase Hart at about the 24-yard line. Chase Hart on the tackle. 38-yard punt by Takalak. Well, when you're on the road to watch Southeastern Conference football this season, plan on eating at Huddle House where you can order their big house breakfast and lunch platters anytime, 24 hours a day. Like that 24-hour-a-day stuff. It's like Tennessee got a freeze play in. Got Kentucky to be drawn off the offsides. Casey Clawson takes a knee. Tennessee thinks that they'll assess the penalty. Another penalty against the Wildcats. They're fourth already. And so we still have 224 to play in the first period. Well, you know they're anxious because this game, they really get juiced up for it because they, they really want to end this streak that Tennessee has against them. But now they have to let their emotions settle down a bit and just go out and play. They're costing themselves right now. So it'll be first and five for the Volunteers. From their own 30-yard line. Out of the I formation, Stevens has just had no place to run as Kentucky once again swallows him up. Robertson is back in the game. Connell also in on the tackle. And that's a good sign for the Wildcats to see big number 63 back on the field. And yeah, we talked about how tough he is when he's feeling good and feeling healthy. The injury settled down a bit. Got some help from Otis Grigsby, number 18 at defensive end. They need Dwayne Robertson in the game. And when they get Jeremy Caudill back fully healthy, number 68, they'll have two guys who are a force at defensive tackle. flag is dropped on the Volunteers as the play does not really develop at all. Troy Fleming, the screen pass, Kentucky all over it, and uh, there probably is going to be a hold yet against the, the Tennessee offensive line. You know, we expected to see screens and draws and traps from Kentucky trying to use Tennessee speed against them. Tennessee trying to use, give Kentucky a taste of their own medicine. Unfortunately, did not execute very well and got a penalty to boot. So the Volunteers moving in the wrong direction, and Philip Bormer's team still does not have a first down in the first quarter. This is their third uh, possession on offense. Second and 17. Keep an eye out for number 56, Dennis Johnson, the defensive end from Kentucky, had 10 and a half sacks. Tony Neely, the sports information director, was able to get him a sack last week, but originally wasn't ruled one. Nice ruling by the NCAA, 10 and a half sacks. It's number one in Kentucky history in single season. Watson's pass is caught. But again, the Wildcats are there as it is uh, Tinsley with the reception. But not much going again for the Volunteers. Now, on a second and long play, he has to dump it a little bit short, so you have to give some credit to the secondary back there covering. This is an eight-man front defense that John Goodner has, and he moves his guys around, shifts them, stunts them. Very difficult to block. Tennessee's offensive line, not just has to, they won't just have a physical day, David, they'll have a big mental day. They'll have to know where the guys are coming from. Another third down play for Tennessee. Time ticking away in the first quarter. Watson at the 16-yard line. And there is uh, Dennis Johnson, the man you just talked about, coming up with a big sack, forcing Tennessee to punt the football from deep in their own territory. 
Casey Clawson back in the pocket, slips as he sets up, but he really didn't have a chance anyway, David. Dennis Johnson coming off the edge, and he just beats an offensive lineman from Tennessee. Had no opportunity to block it. And Dennis Johnson is healthy and ready to go, and that's what Kentucky fans didn't understand. He just wasn't healthy last year and the year before. What a great player. Well, if Kentucky's fans didn't believe their team had a chance, they do now. Back after this message from Advanced Auto Parts. We're back in Lexington, and there's the score. After one quarter of play, the Wildcats have dominated the first 15 minutes of football. And who would have expected that because you saw Tennessee coming in game number six in the country, number seven in the BCS. So much to play for. You figured they'd be ready to go. It appears that they haven't really been ready to go, and Kentucky has been. All advantages to Kentucky right now. Dustin Colt with punting for the third time today. And a Wildcats a good rush. Abney backpedaling at the 30. Abney has a way of making that first guy miss it, doesn't he? Yes, as any good punt returner should do, because oftentimes the first guy downfield is unaccounted for, David. That's what a good punt returner has to do. Make the first guy miss. They'll leave him out there for you. Good field position once again for the Wildcats and sophomore quarterback Jared Lorenzo. That field position really helps Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator, because now it doesn't limit his play calls. You know, where he is on the field, this allows him to do whatever he wants. He doesn't have to be conservative because they're backed up. He can come out and run the draws, the screens, the traps, any special plays he might want to run, good opportunity. Lorenzo working out of the shotgun once again as we start. The second quarter with Kentucky leading Tennessee seven to nothing. And his pass batted down once again at the line of scrimmage. Overstreet. I think number 90 got an arm up. The Cat Rental store first quarter stat looked like this. Look at the numbers uh, with Kentucky totally in uh, domination in the first period. And what really jumps out at me is the minus three yards rushing by Tennessee with Travis Stevens, who's having a great year over a thousand yards rushing, a Dope Walker Award semifinalist, averaging about 150 yards a game running the ball with minus three in the first quarter. And only three carries for Stevens. Kentucky has dominated the time of play, and they run it inside again with Penner. And once again, the offensive line of Kentucky is giving the Wildcat running backs a good deal of running room. Yeah, they're giving Tennessee fits. Look to the left side here. You see, you see right in the middle. Great job blocked by Keith Shadowlane, number 65, who is a former starter who's been hurt, David, back into the lineup now playing here on this beautiful day. And he gives them a nice hole up front. You know, you also take a look also up front. You take a look at uh, Jacobs. Great job by them getting the job done. Wildcats set up five wide receivers on third and four. And the screen to Kelly gets Kentucky another first down. And at about the, the midfield strike, another big third down conversion for the Wildcats. And they're doing a great job with the screen pass inside to the wide receiver. See the top of the screen? You get a nice job with a block by number 88, Dougie Allen, one of the three wide receivers set to the formation. Hey, when you come out and stalk block on the outside guys of Tennessee and then allow the receiver inside to catch the ball unimpeded and see the field and run, Kevin Burnett ended up, made, ended up making the tackle. That's what Kentucky's doing. Their wide receivers block for each other. That allows them to be effective. Timeout taken by Jared Lorenzo as the play clock was taking down. We'll take a break as well. The Wildcats on the march, leading Tennessee 7 to nothing. It's a perfect uh, afternoon for college football in Lexington, the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And Wildcat fans are uh, thrilled with the way their team has started this one. They lead the Volunteers 7 to nothing. And look at the balance in the play selection, David. 12 rushes, 15 passes. Warms Guy Morris's heart as an offensive line coach. Likes to see him run the football. And that was a lateral. Okay, so if that ball gets away from R2's pinner on this play, Tennessee has an opportunity to pick it up and carry it in or recover it. It was definitely a lateral because that ball was, you know, a lot of times they'll call it a swing pass and give the quarterback credit. Not on that one. No doubt it was a lateral, David. Tough, very dangerous play. And Will Overstreet was there in case that ball came out. Would have had uh, a clear path to the end zone for Tennessee. Remember, they've run that play for River Big Yard, what would have been big yards before, but Archie's kind of dropped it the first time. Second 
second down for Kentucky. Lorenzen finds Penner out of his backfield. He breaks a tackle. Boy, he's a hard man to get down, finally, at the 39-yard line. And right now, uh, Charles Davis, Kentucky, is just outplaying the Tennessee Volunteers. Well said, David. That's exactly what's happening right now. In, in Tennessee, we talked about Kentucky having to tackle today, not miss tackles against Tennessee. Same thing applies for the Volunteers because Teddy Gaines, number 12, one-on-one -on -one in open field. It's a difficult play, but he needs to make that play. Gave up, event, gave up additional yardage to R2's pinner. And look at R2's pinner. A great running back for Kentucky in terms of running it inside, but showing his skills and being able to go outside and catch the ball, too. That's the added dimension for the Wildcat offense. They run the five wideouts again. A flag drops quickly as the ball is snapped. And it's going to go against the Wildcats again. Dead ball. Far start on the offense. A five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Referee Harold Mitchell setting the Wildcats back five more yards. Guy Morris, an offensive lineman himself, he spent a lot of time with this uh, young group. He's very much a technician, a teacher, very solid uh, classroom kind of guy. Not real emotional, although you see him showing a little bit of emotion right there. Yeah, he's always under control with his emotions. When he gets fired up, he's the kind of guy, you know, those quiet, silent guys. When they do get fired up, that's when you really have to be scared because he's really bubbled over. He's done an excellent job coaching this team this year. Lorenzen complete again. Allen breaking tackles inside the 20 to the Tennessee 12 yard line. The tackle was finally made by Bernard Jackson, but Allen made three or four Tennessee defenders miss it. And Bernard Jackson to the defensive lineman who had to pursue all the way downfield to make the play. The play was made by Jared Lorenzen's ability to move around and throw on the run. Do it through another strike, and Dougie Allen made one guy miss. There's another one before Bernard Jackson finally makes the play. Great pursuit by him, but he shouldn't have to make plays that far downfield. On first down, swing pass to Scott, lost it first, diving head over heels to the two-yard line. Boy, Kentucky is playing with such emotion, such, such energy. Such emotion, such energy, and with skill, too, David. Again, the crack screen, they throw it out wide. They engage the Tennessee defensive end, ran the other guys off the other way. We're able to hit Chad Scott, their game breaker, before Rashad Baker makes a touchdown saving tackle. Brent Peace, how do you do? I'll tell you, this guy, the offensive coordinator, had a plan, said he was going to use it, and he's showing all of it already today. Lorenzen uh, sneaks it. Touchdown, Kentucky. Big fella sneaking it in. We talked earlier about him just using his size and his size and strength to go ahead and run over someone. I don't know if he heard us or not, but on that sneak, he certainly used it. Anson's extra point gives Kentucky a 14 to nothing lead. Four minutes into the second quarter, an impressive drive again for the Wildcats, who have totally dominated the game. We'll be back after a word from your local station. There's the score in the second quarter from the Commonwealth of Kentucky. The Wildcats in their final home game of the season. Playing with tremendous emotion. They have jumped on Tennessee. That last drive, nine plays, 63 yards. They had a 76-yard drive, 13 plays in the first quarter. And have controlled this football game to this point. Stevens, Scott Ferry will kick off. And it's Leonard Scott standing deep for the Volunteers. Scott from the three. He's got an alley. And for the first time today, Tennessee will have excellent field position. 
as uh, Clawson brings him out. Leonard Scott, one of the fastest guys in the SEC, if not the fastest, a sprint champion, part of the NCAA Outdoor Championship track team of Tennessee. Hasn't really broken loose this year. His longest return for the season has been 30 yards up until that point, but he found a gap and brought it back for Tennessee to give him great field position. A 48-yard return. From the Kentucky 49, Travis Stevens trying to get started. He got tripped up right around the line of scrimmage. Stevens hasn't uh, been able to get a full head of steam up yet. Yes, so far Kentucky's been able to stop him before he starts, which is the key to stopping any good bat. But you know, Tennessee looks at the clock, only down 14 to nothing. Maybe that's a surprise, but they can still stay with their game plan. They're not out of that by any event. Look at the total yards, David, 198 to 12. Kentucky, as you mentioned, playing with great emotion and great skill. Now they have to play within themselves and not make any mistakes. And Tennessee needs to get a first down. That would be for starters, Stevens. About a yard short of it at the 41-yard line. They are still looking for their first first down of the game. Chris Demery made the tackle for the Wildcats. Well, at halftime, we'll be taking a look at the Alltel halftime stats. 9.52 to play in the second quarter. And a third down play coming up for the Volunteers. Yeah, third and short. And you know that Tennessee right now, down 14, wants to get back to basics and run the ball. If you're John Goodner, you load up the line of scrimmage and, you know, enforce them. Just dare them to throw the ball. Because I'm pretty really sure that Travis Stevens is going to come barreling out of right now. It is Stevens who juggled it a little bit. I don't think he ever really had a good grip on the football, Charles, as he got met at the line of scrimmage by Patrick Wiggins in Kentucky. Yeah, Tennessee down 14. You know, they're not tucking their horns in, but they're trying to get back to basics. Said, okay, let's line up and smash the smaller front of Kentucky. Hasn't really happened. Derek Johnson, number 55, at the point of attack. Great job. Chris Gayton diving on the pile later. Patrick Wiggins, number 29, the former walk-on. He's got nowhere to run. You're right, David, juggling a little. And now Tennessee going to go for it on fourth and short. Here comes Travis Stevens again. And Kentucky has everybody up on the line. Stevens runs into a blue brick wall. And you can just tip your hat to the entire front line of Kentucky. They collapsed in there and Stevens had nowhere to go. And this was a huge gamble by Tennessee. Why? Because of the emotion. The up front guys, Dwayne Robertson knifing in number 63. Anthony Wadge at number 24. Now you see the emotion from Kentucky because, again, did they really believe they could do this today? They hoped. Now I think they actually believe, David. I think they really have belief on their side. Phil Fulmer gambled, said, let's go for it on fourth down. Now they really let Kentucky take control here and a, and a big drive on offense. Huge for the Wildcats. Tennessee desperately needs a three and out or a turnover even would be even better for the Volunteers because uh, Kentucky so dominant in this football game. Nice play defensively for the Vols as Richmond makes the tackle. Let's go to Dave Baker on the field. David, when we were talking with the Tennessee coaches earlier this week, Philip Fulmer was talking about the fact of how unhappy he was at the way his defense finished the Memphis game. There were four fourth quarter penalties. He said his kids lost focus and except for that play, it doesn't look like Chavis's unit has gotten that focus back yet. A total lack of emotion down here on the Tennessee sideline. Lindsay, he's got put right open. First down, Kentucky at the Volunteer 36-yard line. Now there's some emotion being displayed <laughs> by Guy Moore. And why not? He's watching the emergence of his team right now. This is what he's been wanting to see for a while. Offensively, they've had it, but he's seeing it out of the defense today. Great job by Lorenzen because he has run the ball a few times today. You kind of honor that as a defense. Maybe you pull off of a receiver in coverage. Then he finds Tommy Cook. Great job by Jared Lorenzen showing poise in and out of the pocket. That pass deflected almost the play that Tennessee needed. Mark Jones uh, had an opportunity to make a huge defensive play for the Volunteers. And that's the third tipped or batted ball by Tennessee today. Two up front with the defensive lineman. And then this one, actually the third one, Rashad Moore, number 58, tipped it. Almost a tip drill for the defensive back. Unable to come up with it. That was number 10, Mark Jones. It's the interception that he, you know, a chance that he wishes he had back. 
could have helped tip things back towards Tennessee in terms of helping them with the emotion of the game. A break for the Wildcats there as Lorenzen on second and ten looking. Abney inside the Tennessee ten-yard line. Once again, it's the play of Darren Lorenzen avoiding the pressure, Charles, and then alertly, patiently looking downfield and finding an open man. And what's happening now, too, for Tennessee is that in their pass rushing, they've had to rush the passer a lot. The Kentucky line has done a good job up front. And then when Lorenzen moves around and buys more time, what you're doing is tiring out the Tennessee defensive front. You know, each time you gear up for a pass rush, David, that's explosive energy you're using. And then, and then when the Lorenzen is throwing the ball, he's finding receivers who are finding open space and getting more yardage. You know, those yards after catch, the yak yardage, they're getting it today. And they have Tennessee totally back on their heels right now. You said in, an, in a break when we were talking, David, not sure Tennessee has the emotion they need today. Hard to start the motor, you know, hard to mash the gas if you never started the motor. Uh -huh. We're not sure Tennessee started the motor yet today. Well, they better uh, get it going somehow because uh, Kentucky is just about to go in three touchdowns up on them in the second quarter. The ball is at the nine-yard line. Lorenzo under center. And he goes at the seven as Overstreet converging on him. And it'll be second and goal for the Wildcats as the clock ticks in the second period. 6.50 to play. And uh, the Tennessee Volunteers rank number seven in the BCS, number six in the two major polls, have been totally dominated by a Kentucky Wildcat team in its final home game of this season. And they got him spread out again, David. Look for 35, Derek Smith. Still a big-time target for them, although Abney's made a bunch of plays for him. It's Scott. He got a great block at about the five, and is dropped at the two. So it'll be third down and goal for Kentucky. And this is part of what Brent Pease told us he would do yesterday. Use Chad Scott as an extra receiver. Put him out in space working on a linebacker. Jabari Greer ends up making the tackle with help from Rashad Baker. But use him as an extra receiver so a linebacker has to match up on him. Kentucky usually will win that battle despite how athletic Tennessee is in the linebacking core. Now on their last drive, Kentucky gave the ball to Lorenzo. He went right up the middle from about the one-and-a-half yard line on a quarterback keeper. Looks like they're going to take a timeout here and talk it over. Using all of the play clock. Leading by two touchdowns. And Jared Lorenzen will make his way toward the Kentucky sideline to talk about offensive options here. As the Wildcats will have a third and goal at the volunteer two-yard line. Yeah, and he didn't just use all the play clock, David. He used game clock, too. Because what Kentucky's doing now is figuring out each time we score, obviously that helps us, but let's shorten the game a little bit too because they know Tennessee is explosive on offense even though they haven't shown it thus far. Great job and poise by Lorenzen. I'm sure Brent P signaled to him, call the timeout at a certain time on the clock. You know, two seconds left in the play clock. Excellent job. Jared Lorenzen fully in control on the field today. I mentioned Tennessee's ranking. Let's take a look at the BCS ranking. Really the only one that matters in terms of uh, where you're going to wind up in the postseason. Tennessee still hanging in there, trying to get a BS, BCS berth. Number seven, Florida's number five. Uh, big game tonight for the Florida Gators in Gainesville against the Florida State Seminoles, who have dropped out of the top 15. And that doesn't help Florida in that situation because uh, strength of schedule is a major factor when determining that BCS ranking. Yeah, and you know, Florida right now looking at some teams ahead of them who have some tough games coming up, hoping that someone will lose ahead of them. Other scores, Georgia, Ole Miss a tight one, Clemson, South Carolina likewise. Ohio State without its starting quarterback struggling against Illinois. Georgia Tech and Wake Forest having a wild one in the first quarter. It's third and goal for Kentucky. Lorenzo rolling out, looking. Touchdown! Charles, I think everybody in the stadium thought Lorenzen was going to try and run it into the end zone. Yeah. And Chase Hart popped free, 
and Arendzin found it. Yeah, it looked like a naked boot, you know, naked bootleg. But what they did was they went with two tight ends on the play, took Derek Smith in as a blocker, and brought Chase Harp across the formation, what they call running through the wash. He kind of got through where the, where the traffic was because of the misdirection. That allowed him to be open in the back of the end zone. Another extra point. And Hansen gives the Wildcats a 21 to nothing lead. Hart's second touchdown catch of the season. It's 21 to nothing, but the team that you at least expect to be on top is there. Well, Wildcat fans celebrating in the second quarter. Look at the score. Sixth ranked uh, Tennessee trailing unranked Kentucky. The Wildcats two and seven coming into the game. Tennessee seven and one. But it has been a total reversal as Kentucky has been the team to dominate. Now the carry kicks it away. Scott two yards deep. He'll bring it out. At the 29-yard line, Tennessee will take the football. We end our season in two weeks in Oxford on December 1st as Vanderbilt takes on Ole Miss. The Rebels looking for their fifth straight bowl appearance as well as still having a chance to win the Southeastern Conference West. The Vanderbilt Commodores looking to send their head coach Woody Woodenhofer out in style. Woodenhofer announced his resignation a few weeks ago, effective after the Ole Miss game. So join us in two weeks at 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. Check local listing in your area. Jefferson Pilot Sports. Lawson Stallworth. First time he's put his hands on the football today. And he gathers about seven yards out to the 37-yard line. That nice call by Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator from Tennessee. When your team's struggling and you're down, you got to get the get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. Dante Stollett hadn't touched it before that play. The numbers uh, embarrassingly in favor of Lorenzen as far as Clawson is concerned. But Tennessee has not had the football. They have no first downs. Kentucky has uh, dominated not only the scoreboard in terms of 21 to nothing, but time of possession as well. Clawson's much more effective if you have a running game, and Tennessee hasn't shown that thus far today. And Tennessee gets its first first down of the game. Mark it down, David. 436 to play in the first half. <laughs> Mark it down. What odds would you have gotten on that? Look at that, 12 to 1, Kentucky. That's, that's another sign of the dominance that Kentucky's exhibiting today over the Volunteers. Remember, Tennessee's been in spots like this before, David, before we get totally lost in the fact that, you know, what Kentucky's doing. They've been there before. They'll have to show that resolve right now. Well, they first of all got to turn uh, the momentum around. And that first down might help get it started. Stallworth, he's got it. Touchdown, Tennessee. And that might just be what Tennessee needed to get that engine running. Yeah, in, in Tennessee, Randy Sanders, we just saw a shot of him on the sidelines, offensive coordinator for the Volunteers. He thought going into the game that Kentucky's corners were vulnerable. And you said to me off air, David, will they take a shot downfield? And I said, why not? They need to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. And Dante Stallworth, his second catch of the game, goes for 59 yards and a touchdown, and it wasn't even close. Jeremy Bowie was really beaten on that, on that coverage. Alex Walls. Stallworth, Stallworth, the big play guy for the Tennessee Volunteers, and uh, finally they get the ball in his hands on this possession. On first down, he gets seven yards, and then the Volunteers go deep with Clawson, throwing a strike for a 59-yard touchdown play for the Volunteers. Yeah, Tennessee, the, we talked about the emotion of this game, and Kentucky's had all of it. But Tennessee, as I said, been there before. They settled in. They know they're down 21, know what they need to do, and say, okay, they came out through a little screen to Stallworth to start and said, let's come back, Dante. You go deep. You guys up front block. This is something you can call in the backyard. You guys block. I'm throwing it deep to my playmaker. And Dante Stallworth whipped Jeremy Bowie. Touchdown, Tennessee. Now it's 21-7. Obviously, the onus now shifts back to the Tennessee defense, which Kentucky has shredded up to this point. Bill Former's offense finally puts points on the scoreboard with 4.06 to go in the first half. And now we'll see what the John Chavis' defensive uh, group can do. And Kentucky has had its way in the first half offensively against Tennessee. 
Three plays, 70 yards. Stallworth on the receiving end. His seventh touchdown reception of the year. And remember, Charles, that he missed three games early in the season. He broke his wrist against Syracuse in the opener and then missed the next three games. Yeah, and since he's been back in the last five games, you know, Dante Stallworth has really put up some numbers, 20 catches coming into this game for over an, almost a 20-yard average and six touchdowns. So they obviously missed him. Abney. Nice return out to the 30-yard line. About a 22-yard return for Derek Abney. Don't forget to stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we'll be highlighting the best in the SEC. Presented by Don Pablo. The, that Tennessee touchdown obviously was huge, David, because it, but, but here's the here's the kicker to it. It was quick strike. Tennessee's defense was not off the field for very long. I think the defense would have liked to have grounded out a little bit, still score, maybe give them a little bit of rest. We'll see if the touchdown was enough to energize Tennessee on defense. Well, they've got playmakers all across the... Uh, that defensive front line and in the secondary as well for Tennessee. And what Kentucky's done so far is spread out those playmakers, made them have to make plays in space, which are your hardest plays to make. One-on-one -on -one tackles in open field, very difficult to do. Nice offensive game plan again by Brent Peace. They got the pressure on Lorenzo. He finds Penner. Darting to the outside, R2's Penner to midfield. There's a flag down as Penner is racing to the end zone. The flag was thrown 20 yards from the line of scrimmage as Pinner was trying to find an opening, and I think it'll go against Kentucky. Yeah, I think they're going to get him for a clip, the, 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 the play that sprung Pinner three. But, you know, again, another big play for Kentucky. Tiring out the Tennessee defense once again. Locking it back on the offense. A 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. The key first down. Look to the left of your screen. Nice patience by Lorenzen. The left of your screen, you'll see the, see the block coming in the back. Kevin Burnett, number two, but up frill on Jabari Greer. Brad Pyatt, number five, the wide receiver. That's a tough one, David. I've got to admit, I'm a former defensive back, and I would love to see that call go against the, go against the offense, but I'm not sure because it seemed to me that he was engaging him on the side, and the defensive back was able just to turn his back into the play. Yeah, that so, looked like a tough call. A tough call. From that angle against Kentucky. As well as ones that can be called, but it's a tough one. Great play. Great play. Well, Teddy Gaines just all over it. Abney tackled just as the ball arrived. The fans want to pass interference uh, penalty against the Volunteers, but there is no flag. Great, great play, play by game. Oh, sorry, Dave, for stepping in there. But it's a great play from a defensive back, and here's why. The screen has worked all day long for Kentucky. The only way you can break up the screen is to get underneath it, and Teddy Gaines did that. Almost appeared he may have had a hand on the receiver before the ball got there, but he was able to come up underneath what they call a hard corner, David. Corner not playing off, you know, not playing five, seven yards off, up in the defense, I mean, the receiver's face, and he came up underneath the screen and made made the play. That's a nice job by Teddy Gaines, although, you know, might have been there a little bit early. As long as you don't get the as long yellow as you flag. don't get caught. Might have been a little early. Kentucky is going to use its final timeout of the first half. Jared Lorenzen came up uh, a little bit gimpy after delivering the pass to Abney. And he might need a moment just to gather himself so the Wildcats stop the clock with 2.44 to play in the second quarter. And Kentucky leading Tennessee at 21-7. to The Wildcats have had two touchdowns called back. Now they went ahead and scored a touchdown after their first penalty that uh, took a touchdown away from them. We'll see how they respond here. They were deep in Tennessee's end of the field the first time and obviously a more difficult situation here with the ball at the 30-yard line of Kentucky but Lorenzen has been outstanding for the Wildcats today here at Commonwealth Stadium let's check with Dave Baker again thanks David we're down here in the front row in the Bob Euchre seats Jackie Morris is here. Jackie turned right around this way you could be up in the suite or whatever but you're down here in the front row and you do this every game I try. I try. I love it. I want to be near the guys and cheer them on. And it's like having your mother behind you. Uh, of course, when Guy was playing in the NFL, I'm sure it was like this as well. Oh, I loved watching Guy play, and I love watching him coach. He's doing a great job. Now, one thing that happened this week, I understand that you took candy to the guys at the end of practice one day and said, believe. 
Yeah, that's right, and they were crunch bars, and I said, it's crunch time, guys. Go get them, get me. It's been crunch time this week. Thanks, Jack. Thank you very much, Dave. All right, back up to you, David. It's been a good crunch time for the Cats in the first half so far. Thanks, Dave. Standing down there with the beautiful lady, the wife of Guy Morris, Mrs. Massachusetts. That's right, Mrs. Massachusetts. Guy yeah, Morris, getting get high for talent everywhere, doesn't he? Right. What a great guy. Picked the winner there for yes, sure. Lorenzen bounced out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And it's going uh, to bring up a third down and about six for the Wildcats. Eddie Moore hit him hard right in front of the Kentucky bench. You know, going back to what Dave, Dave's interview with Mrs. Morris, you know, the word she used, believe, was the key word because we kept asking that yesterday. You kept asking the question, do you guys believe? And I think we got a great answer. And one of the reasons why is because they said this is the best preparation they've had for Tennessee. Derek Smith said that. Last year he didn't feel like they prepared very well because there was so much turmoil around the program. But this year they're prepared and ready to go. Lorenzen drawing a crowd, and he'll be three yards short of a first down at the 37-yard line. Nobody open. Good job by Tennessee's secondary. Albert Hainsworth finally closed the deal. And Tennessee will use a timeout. Their first used timeout of the first half. So they're saving them up for a potential late second quarter offensive rally. Trailing Kentucky by two touchdowns. One thing that Tennessee has not been able to do so far is force uh, Kentucky into making a mistake. No, they have not been able to do that. John Chavis has stopped troops. We saw Coach Chavis up in the box. But now this is about the best possession they've had on defense during this ball game. Well, the Tennessee Volunteers have certainly owned the month of November for the last 16 seasons. Their only losses in November in 16 years. Number one, Notre Dame came to Knoxville in 1990. Rocket Ismail ran 44 yards for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. The Irish went on to win 34-29. Didn't lose again until November of 96. Memphis scored on a three-yard pass late in the fourth. The Tigers won the, against the Vols 21-17. And then two years ago, Arkansas scored a late touchdown, held off the Tennessee drive, that ended with an incomplete pass into the end zone. Razorbacks dropped the then third-ranked volunteer. 28-24, and uh, they're few and far between those losses for the Volunteers in November. A great punt by Pakalak. Parker fair catches the ball at the 10-yard line. There is a penalty flag back near the line of scrimmage. Did Pakalak get uh, run into? Nope, it's going to be a defensive holding against Tennessee. Now, whether it's a post, you know, post kick foul or not, to tell you about how this goes. Does that mean Kentucky gets it back on offense, or does Tennessee just get penalized on defense after the ball was kicked? Either way, it's not a good thing for Philip Fulmer's club because already they're at the 10. Half the distance would put them at about the five-yard line. Or it will be a Kentucky first down. Let's see. Holding on the defense. Three yards within the line of scrimmage. It's the first down. First down, so they go on offense, they're able to keep it. Normally, that type of a foul is assessed against your defensive team, which now becomes your offensive team, and they're, they're penalized. But Kentucky keeps the football, the last thing Tennessee needed to have happen, and this is huge for the Kentucky Wildcats. Those losses that were mentioned in November, you know, you remember that, the three losses? Mm -hmm. I noticed two of the teams wore blue. One of them wore all blue, <laughs> Memphis. What's Kentucky wearing today? Could that be a good omen for the Wildcats? Maybe a reach, but they like it right now. Well, a blue sky, blue uh, uniform for the Wildcats. It's been a winning combination so far at Commonwealth Stadium. Tennessee had used a timeout to give their offense uh, ample time to try and make something happen. But now they're up back on defense again as Hainsworth and Overstreet collapse on uh, big Jared Lorenzen and drop him for a loss back to the 42-yard line. Yeah, and big Bernard Jackson worked his way back there, too. They just totally collapsed the Kentucky front. And they were on Lorenzen really before he had a chance to get set. They flushed him early. See, two guys there, the two guys you mentioned before. And now, and now Jeanette Jackson comes over the top. Now if you're Kentucky, you might want to think about not making a huge mistake here and giving Tennessee an opportunity in your own secondary and your own side of the field. Let's say they take one more shot at it on offense and see if it works. Ainsworth came busting through the middle. And a big hit on Dougie Allen. And not much uh, doing there for the Kentucky Wildcats. 
Yeah, Buck Fitzgerald, number 36, a backup defensive back who plays very well on special teams, always plays with a lot of emotion. He played for his father at Pearl Con High School in Nashville, and Big John Henderson played for his dad there as well. So there, Buck Fitzgerald doing his little John Henderson imitation with that big hit on the pass there. They haven't called John Henderson's name very often today. I have a few plays early, mm -hmm. but later on it's been a lot of Hainsworth and Overstreet. Inside of a minute to go in the first half is Lorenzen. Trying to get as much real estate as he can. Crosses midfield. Dropped at the 47-yard line by John Henderson. Yeah, it looked like a designed quarterback draw to keep Kentucky out of making a mistake here. Let, him, let, let Lorenzo get as much as he can on the play and put themselves in a position to do something. Maybe punt the ball and put Tennessee deep, deep in their territory before they try their last drive. Tennessee has an injured player on the field. And we're still trying to pick up a number. There's a couple guys down, David. I see a blue jersey still down also in that pile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Jared Lorenzen at the bottom of the pile. That's not good news for Kentucky fans. They and need him to get up and run off the field. Uh, he's okay, and John Henderson is the other. Dave Baker uh, on the sideline had a good look at what happened. Dave, what have you got? Two very big guys involved in a really, <laughs> really big-time collision, and the reason Lorenzen was down, even as big as he is, he couldn't get Henderson off the top of him, but they both look like they're okay now. <laughs> hey, 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 Dave, those yeah. are two guys you don't want to play the game of dog pile with, aren't no, they? No, you, you would not want to be on the bottom there. <laughs> Lorenzen, uh, they clock him in at about 280. 270 maybe and of course well, he, big john henderson closer gonna, to 300 he's gonna tell you 265 yeah. but, but we didn't we didn't weigh him you know after before his meal today Wildcats line up on fourth down and five as if they're going to go for it they might just be trying, trying to, to draw, draw tennessee offside yeah. why not use the clock it's a great job of clock management today by brent peace the offensive coordinator hey why not try and go in up two touchdowns now those are first half numbers for oh, Jared Lorenzen. Those are game numbers for a lot of people. That's just first half. Think about what he did last week against Vanderbilt. He threw six, uh, six touchdown passes. No interceptions. And uh, was also 26 of 37. 453 yards passing last week. Yeah, it's just, that sounds just like a track meet, doesn't it? I mean, that sounds like a quarterback throwing routes versus air, you know, which they do in, in, their, in their drills. And Shane Boyd, the quarterback he's been in competition with. Okay, so the clock ran at the wrong time. The clock never should have run when they were at the line of scrimmage. So the Kentucky fans won't like it much, but Tennessee will get a little bit of extra time. And depending on the punt return, David, That'll tell you what ten, that'll dictate what Tennessee decides to do offensively, what, where they are in field position. But we saw Lorenzen talk with Shane Boyd, the guy he's battled up for the quarterback position with. Now Lorenzen, for now, has won the job. And head coach Guy Morris is in conversation with referee Harold Mitchell about this clock situation because they're going to run it back up to 49 which uh, is a big difference for Tennessee, especially, as you point out, Charles, if they are able to get the ball at the 20-yard line or a better field position than that. Pakalak will try and put Tennessee deep in its own territory with a pooch-type kick. Yeah, and the, fa the fans are upset because, one, they, they saw the clock run back up, but, two, they're stopping it at 49, and the, and, the, and the fans saw 45 on the clock previously, David. But everyone has to remember this. Field time is officially kept by the referee on the field. So if he had it at 49 in his pocket, then 49 is the number, not 45. But you know, the people in the stands just won't understand that. There's the timing device on the field. Remember, Tennessee had a chance if they had not been called for a defensive hold at about the 220 mark in right. the second quarter to get the football back at its 10 yard line after a pack -a punt. But a penalty against the Volunteers gave Kentucky a first down, and they were able to run another couple of minutes off the clock. And if you're Tennessee, if you get a good punt return, you, you might want to take out. a shot at things. The clock should not have started until the snap. Therefore, we have 49 seconds on the clock. All right, another explanation. But it's a good explanation. The problem is everyone in this stadium saw 45 on the clock, not 49. That's the problem. But it was a timeout before the play. So, so the problem with the whole thing is that when it's 40, when, when, it's, when it's 45, 49 seconds on the clock, 
a call timeout. The clock doesn't start until the ball is snapped. All right, ball's not snapped. So the clock never should have started. Now the five yards being marked off against Kentucky is for the delay of game. Remember Lorenzo let the clock expire, the shot clock. And it'll be... Uh, <laughs> Fans not real happy. They're not very happy. Pakalak hangs it up high, Parker, at the 10-yard line. No place to run. A great kick by Pakalak, putting him up against the sideline. And uh, Kelly was there quickly for Kentucky. Well, if you're Tennessee, you've got a couple of options here, David. You take a shot at it downfield. And when I say downfield, I say you work to the sidelines and throw a fade streak route to a wide receiver like Dante Stallworth or Kelly Washington. Because if it gets intercepted, then you may have a guy there or you throw it out of bounds. Or you take a knee or two and go to the locker room because you kind of got the emotion at bay now. You don't want to give Kentucky another chance to get emotional before the half. I think they take a shot at it with Washington on the right or Stallworth on the left side. Throw it to the sidelines. I wouldn't throw it towards the middle of the field and have something happen with the ball tipped around. Instead, it's a screen play to Travis Stevens. Tennessee has one timeout left. Stevens up uh, across the 15 to about the 18-yard line. Patrick Wiggins made the Kentucky tackle. And the balls lining up quickly. Watson is down at the 12-yard line. Don't hurry here, Tennessee. This is where you don't hurry. You just take it to the house. Hasn't been a great first half. Go in and regroup and see what you can do. Kentucky, take it off the field. Excited. They should be. They played a great first half. Dwayne Robertson just uh, drilled his man. Kentucky fans exuberant. Their team leading by two touchdowns in the Commonwealth. Dave Baker with Guy Morris. Guy, you know your offense has been playing awfully well the last month or so, but what about the effort of this defense in the first half? It's been, uh, it's been exactly what we've been waiting for. It's good to see it. You know, uh, we won the first half. Now we'll go back 0-0 and see if we can come out and win this second half. You've still got that rhythm going between your quarterback and your receiver. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we're, we're in good rhythm. We've made a couple mistakes up front, jumping off sides. we got the push in the back, call back a uh, touchdown, but we can get those things correct and come back out here and get after the again in the second half. All right, Coach, we appreciate it. Thanks okay. a bunch. Guy Morris heading to the locker room as the Wildcats shocking Tennessee right now on top of the balls. 21-7. We're back with more from Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington right after this. 21-7 here in Lexington, Kentucky. The Cats surprisingly on top of the Tennessee Vols. And as we go back upstairs uh, to our announce crew, David Steele and Charles Davis, guys, a situation, certainly we didn't expect this. You can only imagine what's going on in the Tennessee locker room at halftime. But sometimes when you're a team like Tennessee and you've had a long streak of success, you sometimes run into games like this one. And the question is, how do you face that adversity? What do you do when it hits you? Well, Dave, I think that's the great question. Nice job on the halftime report as well. David Steele and Charles Davis back with you upstairs. And uh, I think the big question is, Charles, can Tennessee find the emotion that's going to be required to come back against a, a, an energetic Kentucky team today? Well, they're going to search for it awfully hard. I know the coaches right now are probably talking to them pretty vigorously about the lack of emotion coming into the game. There are a lot of I told you so's being said in the locker room in terms of I told you Kentucky would be tough. I told you they won't lie down because these are not the Wildcats of years past. Guy Morse has brought a toughness to this team that we saw in the first half. And uh, certainly they believe they can win this game now. They're up two touchdowns at the end of the first half. And let's take a look at some highlights from the first half of the ball game. Yeah, Jared Lorenzen has shown poise from snap one. This touchdown pass to Tommy Cook for Kentucky on the board first. This was after a touchdown pass to Derek Abney had been nullified by a penalty, showing plenty of resolve. Then another touchdown, Jared Lorenzo bowling across the line of scrimmage and into the end zone on a quarterback sneak. Two yards for the touchdown. Kentucky now up 14 to zip, David. And then before you before you can say boo for Tennessee, they strike again. Kentucky comes back and a touchdown pass to Chase Hart, who got lost in the coverage coming across it after the bootleg play action from Jared Lorenzen. Kentucky up 21 zip before Tennessee could answer. And you said it, Casey Clawson may be looking to a playmaker, and he found one in Dante Stallworth. 59-yard touchdown pass. Tennessee's on the board going into the half, 21 to 7. But Kentucky's still feeling pretty good about what they got done. That was a very important touchdown for Tennessee. They were trailing by three touchdowns. They needed the big play and they got it. Our all-tell halftime stats. Well, the stat that jumps out at me right away is rushing yards. Tennessee known as a physical offensive team. Very tough up front. Only three rushing yards. 
catch Travis Stevens only 15 yards in the first half. One stat that we don't see up there is one you pointed out, number of plays. Kentucky's run off, what, 46, 47 plays? Tennessee's 18 in the first half. That's something that Phil Fulmer is going to talk to his team about, meaning the defense has to get off the field, get some three and outs, get some stops, then the offense have a chance to possess the ball a little bit longer. But if you're Guy Morris, you love the spot you're in. Well, don't forget, Tennessee will get the football to begin the third quarter. And it'll be extremely important for the Volunteers to make something positive happen there. We'll be back to Lexington. SEC football is being brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. By Chevy. The cars you can depend on. The cars that last will be there. By Alltel. Alltel Total Freedom Plans give you nationwide calling with no roaming or long-distance chargers. By Pizza Hut. So much variety. The best pizzas under one roof. By Choice Hotels International. The power of being there. Go! By BMW. Visit your local BMW center for a test drive. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And by Ice House. At Plank Road Brewery, we'll make the Ice House. You make the ads. For details, go to icehouse.com. Kentucky leads Tennessee as we head to the second half, 21 to 7. Tennessee gets the ball as uh, the third quarter will start momentarily. But first, Dave Baker with Coach Philip Fulmer. Give us your assessment of that first 30 minutes. Well, obviously, we haven't been ourselves exactly. Uh, the quarterback we knew coming in, he was a real deal. He's made a lot of plays on us. We haven't kept contained very much. You know, I haven't covered the flares. There's just a lot of things we can do better. Keep her poised. Play the second half. And all we need is one more than they got when it's over with. And that's what we're going to try to do. Emotion or execution is a problem in the first half? Well, I think they're very much more emotional than we were coming out. Uh, our execution offensively, defensively, hasn't been nearly what we needed to be. Coach, thanks. Good luck. Second half. Back up to you, David. All right, Dave, I think that was the great question of the day. Emotion or execution? Which was the problem? Charles, I vote for emotion. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that one. Coach Fulmer didn't really want to say that his team wasn't emotional enough because that suggests they didn't come ready to play and didn't hear the messages the coaches gave him, a good head coach defending his team. But it was a combination of both because you have to give Kentucky credit. It's not just that they were jacked up. They made plays. You know, that's the one thing we can't look at, we can't forget. They made the winning plays in the first half, not just came out and jumped up and down and yelled and screamed. They gave themselves a reason to do so. Now the Ferry kicking it away, and Tennessee will have the ball at its 20-yard line as uh, the youngster bangs it through the end zone. And Tennessee with the ball. Charles, how important now for Tennessee, not just to get a few first downs, how important is it for Tennessee to score points right here? Well, I think I don't think it's as important to score points right off the bat as it is to get some first downs and show some offensive, you know, some proficiency. They really haven't done that. Only three yards running the ball in the first half. Paulson five of six, but they haven't had the ball very often. They just need to run their offense and have some success. That'll help them feel better. Sure, they'd love to score. And Travis Stevens has been very quiet in the first half. Stallworth. Did he keep his knee above the ground? I guess so. Kentucky now gang tackling him at the 26. Jeremy Bowie makes the tackle. And uh, we have not heard much about uh, Travis Stevens today. Yeah, Kentucky, that eight-man front became a nine-man front at times in terms of trying to stuff up, stuff all the running lanes, and they've done that. But Travis Stevens overall this season has been quite a find, although the coaches knew about him. They just didn't expect him to carry as much of a load as he did this year. Great balance, great vision, and a lot of toughness in that guy. And he gets the handoff again. Kentucky really keying in. On number 34 today, Chris Demery was the first uh, blue shirt to get him. And it'll be a third down play coming up for the Volunteers, a big one early in this third quarter. Yeah, there's a little bit of a hole early, but Kentucky's defense closed it. Nice play coming down coming down on the inside by the Kentucky defense. Chris Demery, their defensive end, closed the hole quickly and made the tackle. And I think if Tennessee does not get a first down here, this Kentucky crowd and that Wildcat team on the field is going to really be jacked up. Yeah, they're right back into it. They need the first down. And what we said, a few first downs to give themselves some confidence. And they've got the first down. See if Stallworth can get a lot more. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line. So Tennessee converts on third down and two. 
their first possession of the second half from Lexington, Kentucky. It has been a perfect afternoon for football and a perfect, perfectly executed play on third down by Tennessee. Yeah, staple of the Tennessee offense for a number of years. The quick pass to the wide receiver, just a quick hitch and one-on-one -on -one play, and he ended up breaking the tackle of the defensive back Tatum. Jamal White had to come over and make the play. That's why Tennessee likes it. One-on-one -on -one receivers versus DB, Tennessee likes their odds. And deep, Washington, the intended receiver, just overthrown. Kelly Washington, a strong candidate for freshman of the year. A 22-year-old freshman. He spent four years playing baseball in the Marlins organization, but he burst on the scene after Stallworth's injury earlier in the season. Yeah, he burst in a big way. 11 catches for, what, 270 yards against LSU. Or, excuse me, 256 yards and a touchdown against LSU, a Tennessee single-game record. Been playing a lot of this year with a stress fracture in his foot, David. He's limited his speed a little bit. And you notice that last pass, they just missed connecting again against Jeremy Bowie, who gave up the touchdown in the first half. Almost fumbled a snap, but it's Stevens. Battering his way to the 49-yard line. He'll be two yards short of a Tennessee first down. That looks more like what they're trying to do on to offense. Mike Berry, the offensive line coach. You know, and Doug Marone, the, the, the tackles and tight ends coach. This is more what they like to see. Good poise by Casey Clausen because the snap was high and bobbled. He was able to get it to Travis Stevens. A hole was wedged up front. Another big third down now for the Volunteers. Volunteers threw it on third and two a moment ago to Stallworth. Let's see what Clawson has up his sleeve on third and two and a half. It's Parker. Quick slant. First down, Tennessee. And the first catch of the afternoon for Eric Parker. He is a, a senior from Shorewood, Illinois. Nice play by Eric Parker. They expect big things out. He's had a lot of trouble with injuries. And it was press coverage by Derek Tatum, number 21. Tennessee often runs a fade versus press coverage. This time they showed the fade and then came back inside with the slam. And Eric Parker, who has battled injuries throughout his whole career, limped off the field after making that catch, but another first down for the Vols. It looked like they were checking his uh, shoulder. Boston going deep. Washington, the intended receiver. Jeremy Bowie with him step for step. And the ball, it looked like, was thrown to the outside. And it appeared that Washington wanted to turn to the inside. So yeah. maybe some miscommunication there by Tennessee. I think you're right, David. A good, good assessment of that one. But you notice who they went after again? Jeremy Bowie. Each time it's been a deep route, they seem to have gone after him. They got him in the first half, so they think they've got him back on his heels. Maybe hurt Dent his confidence a little. And Kelly Washington has took, took, run two streaks against him in this possession. A four-man rush. Stevens. Well, Dimmer closed on him quickly, didn't he? Sure did. Got a lot of help from David Johnson, the outside safety, or the hybrid strong safety outside linebacker position in John Goodner's defense. Nice job of David Johnson closing on Travis Stevens, allowing Demery to come from inside out to make the tackle. This Kentucky defense has really played well today. Parker returns for Tennessee. Troy Fleming is the only setback on third down and 10. Tennessee has not had much success but they have converted a pair of third downs on this drive. It appeared that Clawson hurried that pass. And the Stallworth says, I was open, and uh, he just didn't get me the ball. Yeah, I think Casey Clawson wanted to go elsewhere with the ball first. Then he decided to go to Dante Stallworth, but I think he realized that he was short of the first down and almost hesitated, like, I don't want to go there, and ended up not making as strong a throw as he wanted to. But Dennis Johnson was in there applying a little bit of pressure on Casey Clawson making his presence felt again. Justin Colquitt, Greg Colquitt's son, Jimmy Colquitt's uh, cousin. Boy, that's good concentration there by Abner. He had a volunteer, Witten, standing uh, right in his face, looking eyeball to eyeball at him when he pulled that one in. Kentucky with the ball at the 15-yard line. Jared Lorenzen, outstanding in the first half. We'll see what he can do here in the third quarter. Dave Baker back at Commonwealth Stadium, Tennessee, trying to stop this Kentucky offensive onslaught. Injuries becoming a problem. Rashad Baker, you see the brace on his left ankle. He tried to go but could not a moment ago. Left linebacker Kevin Burnett on the sideline as well with a sprained left ankle that won't allow him to go. Big problem for Tennessee on the left side of the defense, David. 
Absolutely two key players for the Volunteers defensively. Artus Penner. Driven down at the 17-yard line by Julian Battle. Nice tackle by Battle, the junior college transfer from California. And uh, Lorenzen just uh, amazing in the first half. Look at the completion percentage. 198 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and then you couple that with what he did and running the football, Charles, and that is quite a half of football. Yeah, that's when you got that's when you have the whole package, the total package. And Jared Lorenzen showed that in the first half. Again, Guy Morris, he said his maturity has been the key. Showed plenty of maturity and poise in the first half. And here he goes, rumbling across the 20 to the 23-yard line. He's just a difficult guy to bring down. He is so big and strong and a much better athlete than you would think looking at him physically. Yeah, when you win. And then on this play, watch number 37 for Tennessee, Eddie Moore, helping with the tackle. He's trying to get the ball out more than he is trying to tackle Jared Lorenzo. You see him right there pulling and yanking and tugging? They're trying to create a turnover deep in Kentucky's territory and give the offense the short field to work well, from. Well, Tennessee, Charles, has forced seven turnovers in the last two weeks. Kentucky, no interceptions, no fumbles today. And that's the key to victory for Kentucky. Don't turn the ball over against Tennessee. Make them go to long field all the time. Quick strike to Allen. Great, great play. Great play there on the corner by Eddie Moore. The junior from South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Yeah, right. Open field tackle. That's right next to the Alabama border. My roommate in college was from Bridgeport, Alabama, which is like the sister city to South Pittsburgh. They're right there next to each other, one on Alabama side, one on Tennessee side. But what a great play by Eddie Moore because that's a linebacker taking on a running back. And the running back's supposed to win that battle in the open field, David. Excellent open field tackle by Eddie Moore. And Tennessee desperately needing a stop. And they force the punt. Big rush. Hackalack gets it away. And it's Stallworth, uh, the return man, at the 41-yard line. Kentucky really doing a good job covering. Kelly made the tackle for the Wildcats. Almost a block by Corey Larkins on this punt. Watch Pakalak as Larkins comes in from the right side and just narrowly missed it. Kentucky head 21 to 7 over Tennessee in the third quarter on the punt. Glenn Packlack got it off, but Corey Larkins, number 23 from Tennessee, just took the wrong angle. And then from there, number nine, Stephen Marsh gets into it with Glenn Packlack, the punter. Just a warning for everyone: Glenn Packlack lifts for the Kentucky team, has big old guns, thinks of himself as a tough guy. That's not your normal punter that you want to take on. Uh, he's a big fella, 6'3, 230. Tennessee throwing on first down in the pass. It's complete at the 47-yard line. Montrell Jones, the receiver. And the Volunteers pick up good yardage on first down. Montrell Jones. Montrell Jones is a receiver from Louisville, Kentucky. I believe he went to Mayo High School. And I believe he originally committed to Kentucky. Changed his mind and went to Tennessee. So you heard the smattering of boos from the Kentucky mm -hmm. faithful when Montrell Jones' name was called. A true freshman, only his fifth catch of the year. Four line outs for Casey Clawson on second down. Here's Washington's first catch. He spins to the outside. Got a block. Washington is gone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Forty-eight yards on the pass play for the Volunteers. And they are down by just one touchdown in the third quarter. We said in the first half, David, Tennessee's been there before, going to try and stay the course. Here's the problem. The pass to Washington. Now he spins. Jeremy Bowie takes the wrong angle and misses the tackle. Then Washington picks up a nice block downfield on Quintus Cumbie and takes it the distance. The quick strike capabilities of Tennessee rival that of Kentucky's because their wide receivers can turn short passes into long gains and touchdowns. You've got to be able to tackle, David. You've got to make that one-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field. The extra point good by Alex Walls. Washington makes his first catch of the afternoon. A, a big one. Turns it into six points for the Volunteers. 
for this quick strike Tennessee offense. They've scored two touchdowns, both on big plays with Boston Engineering. Yeah, and both of them on big plays at Jeremy Bowie, number 38. Very unfortunate for him. You know, in the last Tennessee possession, they took two shots at him downfield. Remember, they didn't complete either one. It was both of them to Kelly Washington. This time they go short. Kelly Washington makes the spin away. Bowie misses the tackle. And then on the block on Quintus Cumbie, Dante Stallworth, the wide receiver for Tennessee, helps out. So the Tennessee receivers taking a page from the Kentucky receivers sure. book and blocking and helping out their mates. Yet the call is back, and this year is your chance to win every weekend with Ice House. Saturday during the game, a few lucky consumers will get a winning phone call, and one of those winners will get to see their favorite team play all season long. It could be you. See participating Ice House dis displays or visit icehouse.com to register your phone number. Ice House official beer of JP Sports Broadcast would like to congratulate Stephen Emerson from Bell, Tennessee. Last week's Get the Call Grand Prize winner. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents who are 21 and older. See display for official rules. Sweepstakes ends November 20th, 2001. Now the Volunteer Nation is uh, getting a little more juiced up about their chances now as they have cut the lead to one touchdown. Abby runs into a big orange wall at the 22-yard line. And that's where Kentucky will get the football. But now, David, you know, Kentucky's offense going back onto the field. Obviously, they, they want to score a touchdown. But I'm going back to what I said about Tennessee to start the second half. Some first downs, some offensive efficiency, control the ball a little bit, give their defense a little time to settle down on the sidelines. You don't want to put them right back into the fray with a three and out after a big strike from Tennessee. You want to control the ball a little while and help them out by giving them some rest. Second uh, possession for the Wildcats in the second half. They were not able to move the ball on their first third quarter possession. The engine fumbling the snap, dumping it over the middle to Abner. He slips and falls at the 27-yard line. A gain of five on first down for the Wildcats with Keon Whiteside there and ready to make the tackle if Abney had not slipped. Yeah, Keon Whiteside was the starter to begin the season. He's had to come back in for Kevin Burnett, who took his job, because Kevin has been hurt in this ball game. Nice job pursuing he and Eddie Moore. And what I saw on that play, David, was Tennessee actually keeping it in front of them earlier in the game in the first half. That would have been a bigger gain by Derek Abney. Would have run more free in the secondary. Cook is in motion for the Wildcats on second and five. They're across the pennant. Running hard, R2 Spinner to the 35. He'll pick up the first down. Eddie Moore, the volunteer tackle. But Kentucky moving the chains, trying to protect a seven-point lead. Georgia leading Ole Miss in the third in Oxford. A big one in the Southeastern Conference. South Carolina now on top of Clemson on our Pizza Hut scoreboard. And Ohio State coming back and taking a one-point lead on Illinois. Atlantic Coast Conference football action. And Arkansas and Mississippi State in the second quarter. And Arkansas still nursing SEC West title hopes that they can win out and get some help. Penner running inside for a couple of yards. I think Kentucky's ability, Charles, to run the ball inside on occasion. It hasn't been a, a staple of their offense today, but just uh, well enough to keep Tennessee honest. Yeah, great point because they haven't had to play smash mouth. If they had to play smash mouth against the Tennessee front, they'd be in trouble. But because they've been able to spread them out, you know, with the offensive sets, that has allowed them to have some holes up front and allowed them to run inside, and that has been effective for them. Lorenzen working mostly today out of the shotgun at second and eight. And Neal across the middle. Well, he catches everything that comes his way, doesn't he? He truly does. 49 catches coming into the game today, and I would doubt that there were very many drops among the, among the balls that came to him. And plenty of time for Lorenzen to throw, and notice the opening he had to throw the football, David. Remember, he's had three passes batted back at him by the Tennessee defensive front. That time, Kentucky's offensive line able to clear a hole for him, a throwing lane, as they call it, and he was able to deliver a strike low and hard to Abney. Tennessee has had the big play ability today. They've scored on a pair of quick strike touchdown passes from Clawson. Kentucky has been more of a ball control team today, and they've scored on three long touchdown drives. Dumping it over the middle. Intercepted. He fumbles the football, but picked up 
and it still leaves in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. What a play. Rashard Moore intercepted the football. And then it was a mad scramble after the fumble, but the Volunteers get six out of it. We just talked about tip balls, David. They had three. They had the throwing lane the last play. This time now in the middle, Albert Hainsworth, number 92, tips it. Rashad Moore with the tip drill. Takes it all the way downfield on the interception. Chad Scott hustles, knocks it loose. Looks like it, uh, looks like Andre Lon has a shot, doesn't get it, but number six, Constantine Ritzman, the defensive end with plenty of hustle down the field. He comes up with the touchdown for Tennessee, and we're about to have a tie ball game. And the extra point by Walls is good. We're tied at 21 with 5.53 to play in the third quarter. Tennessee looking for the opportunity, finally creating a Kentucky turnover. And they score on a bizarre play in Lexington. Back after a word from your local station. Sixth-ranked Tennessee has erased a 21 to nothing Kentucky Wildcat lead. It's a big play offense. It was a big play defense with the interception by Moore and the recovery of the fumble in the end zone by Richmond. And we're tied with 5.53 to play in the third quarter. Great story about Constantine Richmond coming over from Germany to try and play American football. Played for a perennial power in Florida, North Florida Christian. And then Tennessee was able to recruit him. Marquez Johnson, he fumbled near the goal line, but he recovered and makes a nice return out at the 29-yard line. An injured Kentucky player lying on his back at the four-yard line, and he's going to require some attention. A lot of guys have gone down today, David. A lot of emotion in this ball game. It is a rivalry game, a border war, you know, for Kentucky and Tennessee, of course. Kentucky really came in charged up for this game. And you tend to have a few more injuries in this, not just because the hitting is so hard, but the emotion takes it out of you, too. You come and get the wind knocked out of you, and you're gassed out, and you just feel like you just can't go anymore for a while. So hopefully you just got the wind knocked out of him he's able to get up. Well, when you're on the road to watch SEC football this season, plan on eating at Huddle House, where you can order their big house breakfast and lunch platters anytime, 24 hours a day. That's Huddle House. From Lexington, Kentucky, the injured player is Mike Williams, the freshman defensive back out of Tallahassee, Florida, and it looks like he just got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, here's hoping the emotion of the game and probably took a glancing blow with someone with maybe an elbow in the stomach. Here's hoping he can go because I think the Kentucky defensive staff has a decision to make about what they do with Jeremy Bowie on the corner. Mike Williams is one of the guys who would go in and possibly replace him. Tennessee playing with five defensive backs most of the second half, David trying to co combat this Kentucky passing offense. And give Tennessee credit, they have responded after falling behind by three touchdowns in a hostile environment. Jared Lorenzen, the audible with the play count kicking down Lorenzen. As a flag drops, Allen makes the catch at the 35-yard line, a gain of six, but there is a flag on the play. And it's going to go against the Wildcats, apparently a holding infraction. This is, we're hitting the danger part of the game for Kentucky right now, David. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. The three first down. And the reason I say that is because they, they jumped out that 21 to nothing lead, had all the emotion going their way, and now they need to settle in and have a good drive. they got to give their defense a chance to continue to relax, and the offense can't have bad things happen to it because now the confidence gets chipped away. You know, 16 straight years wears on you, even if your tip players weren't there for all 16 years. Wears on the fans, and it filters down to the players. They need a big drive here to help themselves out. That penalty the eighth against Kentucky this afternoon. And off the pinner. Volunteers taking a crack at him. Looks like that ball almost uh, shaking loose. Andre Lott made the tackle for Tennessee. Remember, he wasn't supposed to start today because of the hamstring problem that, that happened against Notre Dame. But because of all the multiple receiver sets of Kentucky, they said, you can go, Andre. We need you out there. He's played a pretty good game so far and showed no effect to the injury. 
Well, he's one of the senior leaders, a three-year starter on that Tennessee defense. Rising uh, to the occasion uh, here today in Lexington. Tennessee a little confused in the secondary. Derek Smith, we haven't heard much from Derek since early in the game. Another flag is dropped as uh, Smith makes the catch and is close to a first down. But there is another flag on the play. Remember, Smith suffered the hit pointer on Kentucky's first possession. He was able to come back, but that was the first ball thrown his way since early in the first quarter. Might be, might be a block downfield. He might have got a clip or a block in the back against Kentucky is what I'm anticipating by this huddle. Well, the official's having a difficult time sorting it out, whatever it is. Kentucky seems to be in retreat, though. Their players anticipating the call going against them. Legal man downfield. An eligible receiver and another penalty against uh, Kentucky. Their ninth of the afternoon. And a pretty good play is uh, taken away from the Wildcats. Now they really have to dig down deep. As Tennessee has gobbled up the momentum, tied the football game, their offense just chomping at the bit to get the ball back. Yeah, you see, Kentucky now, when you have to hold the ball a little while, and, you know, did a, did a lineman get downfield on them? You see to the left of your screen, up in the middle, number 71, as Josh Parrish appeared if he may have gotten downfield before the ball was delivered. So, Tennessee playing field position sets them back. Making him go second and forever. <laughs> Playing that penalty ball. Kentucky now penalized nine times. And it is second down and long for the Wildcats. Lorenzen fumbled the snap and just throws it away. Great play by Jerry Lorenzen. Not sure up on the sack sheet, but able to avoid a sack and another bad play after the fumbling the snap. Be able to pick it up and get rid of it and bring it up to third and long. If he holds it, maybe it's a sack or another fumble. Good poise by him. That young man is just maturing in front of our eyes, David, each and every game. Those are the plays people at home will go home and won't remember. They'll remember the touchdown passes, but his coaches sure will remember that. Uh, but uh, not the outcome that you would hope for, even no. though a good individual play by Lorenzo. Yeah, Big third down play. He's avoided making a bad play worse. And I see coming with a huge rush, Lorenzo. Abney, 44-yard line, first down Kentucky. And just when it seemed like the air had been completely taken out of their sails, Lorenzen comes up with a huge play. And you have, if you have to go back to him getting rid of the ball on second down so they could have a third down. And it wasn't a longer, for, longer uh, way to go for a first down. Overstreet misses. Lorenzen steps up and delivers a strike to Abney in front of Teddy Gaines on the coverage. As a defensive lineman, you look back at the secondary and say, hold it a second. <laughs> with that rush, you've got to cover those guys. Tennessee coming with a blitz, Abney, and evades the first volunteer tackle. And suddenly the Wildcat offense has found new life. That's uh, close to a first down at the 46-yard line of Tennessee. Bernard Jackson made the tackle. You know, if you go back to that ball, Lorenzen completed to Abney for the first down. One thing that you have to see, obviously, that's great pace on the ball, great zip. Abney, again, as you said, David, catches everything. But Tennessee defensive backs don't show great ball skills at all times. Their game is near the play. He's got to make a play on the ball. There's a quarterback sneak that goes five or six yards. Lorenzen. Running up behind big Nick Sykes. And Kentucky picks up another first down. You know, volunteers were not in good position here, ready to go on the play. Jared Lorenzen, he may have just come up and just slapped the center and said, give me the ball and let's go. May not have been called. No one else really needed to know the snap count. Boom, up into the line of scrimmage, first down. Dave Baker on the sideline. What have you got? David, the one thing about Jared Lorenzen, as big as he is and for all the jokes he gets, John Chavis said you hardly ever get a free shot at him. Tennessee had a couple of free shots at Penner, but they could not bring him down. First down, Kentucky at the 17, 18-yard line, rather, of Tennessee. 
What a great run by R2 Skinner. Going up inside, breaking tackles. He's the guy who runs inside the tackles for Kentucky, and he's almost not to be denied on this run. And wasn't it just a couple of minutes ago we were saying this is danger time for Kentucky? They've answered that challenge. They've responded and brought the crowd back into the game. The third down play conversion was huge for the Wildcats. Now it's first down again. Lorenzen has Abney over the middle. Inside the Tennessee five. It's first down and goal for the Wildcats. Just an incredible turnaround. And once again, Lorenzen looking for his favorite receiver, although he has really spread the ball around nicely today. Yeah, and Jared Lorenzen buying time opened up the passing lanes and opened up the space for Derek Abney. When he goes on the move, people try to account for him. It's hard for a secondary to stay with receivers when quarterbacks are moving around and buying time in the pocket. Great drive by the Wildcats. Rolling out, here's Lorenzo. Oh, man. Hart had an easy six and could not make the play. Chase Harp, a former quarterback, came to Kentucky wanting to throw the football. He's a big guy, and they coach, the coaches say he's one of the tougher guys on the field since they moved him to tight end. He likes to block, likes to mix it up. But right now, he's thinking, oh, this is another six for me, the same play he scored on in the first half. You know, ball was on the inside hip of him, but it's a catch he has to make. Mark Jones is in the area, but he didn't cause the incompletion. The incompletion was caused because Chase Harp just didn't catch the ball. You can almost say Jackie Smith in the Super Bowl. I mean, that, that ball was just right in there. Couldn't have been thrown any better. I good, mean, you know, you've got to make that catch for Chase Harp, and he knows it. He's come to the sideline, apparently shaken up on the play. Yeah. Psychologically, at least, if not physically. Still second and goal for Kentucky. Lorenzen throws it away. Tennessee had good pressure on him. Richmond, Hainsworth. Both of those... Uh, Big guys in there putting the heat on Lorenzen, and he didn't see anything that he liked, so he dumped it. Another good play by him. Gives him another opportunity. Worst case scenario, you get a field goal out of it. But I will say this. A field goal will be a disappointment for Kentucky here because it looked like they had six. Remember the last time they scored a touchdown? Took it away? This great drive here, 68 yards, nine plays. Yeah, you remember the last time, though, they scored, took it away on a penalty? They came back and scored. They need to do that again here. And they're going to use a timeout. To make sure they get the right play on. We're uh, at the two-minute mark in the third quarter. What a football game today in the Southeastern Conference. And the Wildcats have been uh, shocking uh, the Tennessee fans all afternoon long. They now have come back with a nice drive when it appeared that Tennessee had wrested the momentum completely away from them. Yeah, our old friend Momentum had tiptoed over to Philip Homer. Now I think he's sitting back about midfield again. The Tennessee schedule as we go down the stretch, David, this game with Kentucky, a lot of people had said, hey, Tennessee wins that, beats Vanderbilt, goes on to take on Florida. Well, they haven't taken care of business here yet against Kentucky. Because everybody wants to, they want to go ahead and put that December 1 game against Florida as the showdown for the SEC East crown. Right now, Kentucky has a lot to say about that for Tennessee. It, an unusual an unusual situation because Tennessee always concludes Kentucky season, David. That's always tr been tradition for them, but because of the tragedy of September 11th, their game against Indiana, which is another traditional rivalry game for them, was postponed. Now they'll play that after, Indi after Tennessee, and that's going to be difficult for Guy Morris to get them back emotionally. Two big emotional games in a row, Tennessee-Indiana. Kentucky has been close so often this year and just unable to finish. And uh, they've got a chance once again against a great football team, the Tennessee Volunteers. Let's go to Dave Baker on the sideline. David, I don't know what Derek Smith is going to do after he gets out of school, but right now he's bucking for a sales position. He's been lobbying the coaching staff and his great school buddy, Jared Lorenzen, hard to call his number in this short yardage situation. And why not? He's a great target. He's in the slot to the right, Lorenzo looking left, throwing, touchdown, Abney! Derek Abney has caught eight passes on the afternoon. 
And this one puts Kentucky back in the lead after they had given up a three-touchdown advantage and appeared to be in big trouble. And it was Adney, remember, that made the big catch on the third down conversion when Tennessee was third and better than 20. He's had quite a day. His eighth catch, David. Remember, Randy Sanders told us on the conference call, welcome to there for Tennessee, that these are not the Wildcats that we're used to playing. This team has a lot of heart and effort and grit, and they are showing it today. Great job by Kentucky. Guy Morris has done a fantastic job in his first year getting this team ready to play in this ballgame. And they certainly were ready today. And Abney from Lorenzen, his first touchdown catch of the afternoon, his fifth of the season, the eighth of his career. He's been a tempo setter for him, David, all year long. He set up things for them. He's made plays. Even going back to the first game, they may have lost to Louisville, but his punt return energized that team. 47 yards for a touchdown, and he hasn't looked back since. Team may be 2-7, and seven, but Derek Abney's really 9-0 and oh in his heart, the way that he goes about things. And speaking of schedule, you know, Derek Smith told us, a guy, Morris, told him, let's make this a three-game schedule for us. First game was against Vandy. We're now 1-0. Forget the rest of the season. We're 1-0. Let's go make Tennessee 2. Then we'll worry about Indiana. And it's a great way to look at the rest of their season by Guy Morris. He's done a really good job as their coach. Well, they've competed all year long. They haven't quit. No. And uh, felt like, as we talked about earlier, that they were really prepared to play Tennessee all week long. They've had the best practices of the season. The Kentucky Wildcats and uh, well, you could tell from the opening kick that Kentucky was going to give Tennessee a handful today in Lexington. Yeah, and the best part is that the emotion, after the emotion kind of peters out, you have to settle in and play football. Kentucky's been able to have the emotion and settle in and play football. And just when it looked like things had totally turned around on them, when they needed the big drive, they produced it the last time. Now they're ahead 28-21. Stalba Ferry kicking off for the Wildcats. The dangerous uh, Leonard Scott standing deep. And it is Scott from the four. Scott up the middle. And a nice return up across the 30 to the 33-yard line by Leonard Scott. A good field position for the Volunteers. Ten plays, 72 yards, almost four minutes of the clock. Abney gets the touchdown pass from Lorenzen. Uh, just what the doctor ordered, cliche time, huh? That's exactly what they needed was that drive. Jeremy Bowie, who's had a tough afternoon. Very difficult to cover these receivers in the SEC. But they, all the big plays Tennessee's had today on offense have come at him. And he's back on the field for this drive. The senior from Tyler, Texas, likely to be tested again. Watson gets protection. A pass caught, but dropped by Gayton. Derek Kensley, the receiver, but senior linebacker Chris Gayton from Montreal, Quebec, is there to make the tackle. An undersized linebacker, but a tough, gritty little guy. Yeah, he's a guy who came here and started as a safety, and then they ended up moving him to a strong safety position. He's going to play their new outside safety or hybrid position, strong safety linebacker in John Goodner's defense this year. He was excited about that because he's a prototype for it. Right size, speed, effort, but he had to move inside because of injuries. He's never complained. What a great young man. Kentucky lost Ronnie Riley in their opener against Louisville. Open the spot. For Gayton, swing pass to Stevens. Well, you can't tackle this guy around the ankles, can you? Very difficult to do. He does great leg drive and keeps his, keeps his feet moving. It's a good one-on-one -on -one effort by Patrick Wiggins, number 29. But Stevens is able to kick out of it and gain extra yardage. That sets up a third and short for Tennessee. See the swing pass. That's one-on-one. -on -one. Break down number 29, Patrick Wiggins, and make the full effort, which he did. But Stevens kept the leg drive before Watson. So number 24 came over and cleaned things up. Everybody up on their feet late in the third quarter. Tennessee faced with a third down and three, trailing by a touchdown in Lexington. It looked like Clawson short-armed that football. They ran out of space, David, because the route ran all the way to the sideline. And he ran out of room. Dante Stallworth had to stop running because there's no more real estate. He had to set up on the sideline, hope the ball got to him. And Casey Clawson ended up throwing it inside of him. Didn't get enough on it. Good well, stand he, for Kentucky. And he went to uh, the guy that you would expect Stallworth for the big third down conversion, but could not convert. 
Robertson limping off. He's already had uh, difficulty in the game with uh, an injured knee. Cole quit punting. Abney from the 11. He got a block. He turns the corner of the 10. Oh, he tripped up from behind. A great play by Tennessee. Boy, I tell you what, that was a big-time tackle by the Volunteers to keep Hanson from turning the corner. Yeah, Mark Jones, you know, if, if he doesn't make this play, it looks like Abney has the corner and a little bit of a wall. And this young guy is dynamite. See him coming to the left. He's about to pick up the blocks on the corner. Mark Jones right here, last effort, just hits him on the heel, runs that heel into his other foot and knocks him over. Big-time tackle for Tennessee. Not aesthetically pleasing, but exactly what they needed. Well, you saw Whiteside, who was in the picture, but I think Abney goes right by Oh, yeah, him. Whiteside has no chance to make the play there because of Abney's speed. Well, that's a big play for Tennessee Jones. On first down, the handoff to Penner. He has been a workhorse today, and a very Travis Stevens-like. Raccoon Penner battering his way to the 20-yard line. Chad Moore having difficulty getting up. And Philip Fulmer watching the clock tick down in the third quarter with his team trailing by seven. Now Chase Harp uh, having difficulty on the field. And remember, he got hurt on the he was hurt on the play. There was almost a touchdown for Kentucky before Abney ended up catching the touchdown pass. Mm -hmm. But I think if you told John Chavis, the defensive coordinator before Tennessee, that Kentucky would have this much success running against his defensive front, I think he would have said, I don't believe that would be accurate, sir. I think our defensive front would handle things because Tennessee came into the game, you know, number seven in the country in rushing defense. You wouldn't expect a Kentucky team that doesn't run the ball that often in, you know, in the last six or eight games to be able to do what they're doing. Tennessee only surrendering 82 yards rushing per game coming into the game and Kentucky has uh, pounded the ball up there for 127 yards and we still have 15 minutes and 20 seconds of football remaining. Yeah, and I think that Kentucky's ability to spread the field has opened up a number of those running lanes for the, for the backs for Kentucky. So Harp, the junior from Danville, Kentucky, able to get to the sideline and it will be a second down play. From the Kentucky 20-yard line. Time winding down in the third quarter. And listen to this crowd, David. They're going to be into it going into the fourth quarter. They were they were hoping. They weren't sure they believed. I think they believe now. They want Kentucky to close them out. Kentucky jumped on Tennessee early. The Volunteers responded. But the Wildcats take a seven-point lead of the fourth quarter. What a game from Lexington. There's your scoring summary after three quarters of play from the Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington where the Wildcats jumped out to a 21 to nothing lead. Tennessee tied it up at 21. And Kentucky went back on top on a Lorenzen to Abney touchdown pass. Now the Wildcats, as we start the fourth quarter, are second down and four from their own 20-yard line. Lorenzen pass complete to Sims. First down for the Wildcats at the 27. Early in the football game, Kentucky came out roaring. A 74-yard touchdown drive kept off with a strike from Lorenzen to Tommy Cook. Tennessee, after trailing 21 to nothing, responded with two big plays. One of them, a long pass play from Clawson with Washington doing most of the work on it. Running after the catch, Tennessee tied the score at 21, but Kentucky responded. Abney, who converted a huge third down play earlier on the drive, caught the four-yard touchdown pass from Lorenzen. And that's where we are, 28-21 Kentucky, early in the fourth period. Stop the play by Jackson. Jared Lorenzen, you can't say enough about his play today. The sophomore from Fort Thomas, Kentucky, lost his starting job after the Louisville game in the opener. Shane Boyd uh, took over for three weeks. Lorenzen got the job back against LSU as he guided the Wildcats back from a big deficit. They almost won that game. And Lorenzen has played very well since then. He pumps it and delivers. And that 
went right through the arms of Dougie Allen. I wonder if he knew the number 14, Julian Battle, was coming. You talk about Jared Lorenzen getting his job back. He did it the old-fashioned way, the Smith-Barney way, David. He earned it. And he earned it off of a hit like that from Will Overstreet, too. You know, you, you, almost, you almost could feel Dougie Allen sensing Julian Battle's presence. There's Guy Morris. Come on, guys. Winning, you know, to win games, you got to make those types of plays throughout the game. Not just three quarters worth, not three and a half quarters worth, but four quarters worth, because that's what's caught Kentucky a few times this season, not closing out games. The emotional leader of Tennessee's defense just went off the field. Will Overstreet. And third down for Kentucky. Looks coming from the outside. The game's running back to the inside and nowhere to go. Bernard Jackson running very effectively laterally. He's got great speed in pursuit of Sims. Choice Hotels uh, stats through three periods. And you see Kentucky still dominating. Look at the rushing. Who would have believed that Travis Stevens and the Volunteers would have only 12 yards rushing through three quarters? No one, because all you heard going into this game was Tennessee's the physical team up front, likes to run the ball, smash it at you. Kentucky said, and admittedly so, we'll have to finesse Tennessee. Today they've been just as tough as the Volunteers. Great job by... Uh, Kelly makes the uh, the tackle. Stallworth able to keep his knee above the ground. It didn't look like he was going to be able to. Yeah, it, I it, thought it, it was. I thought the was look. down, but the official was right on the play. He had a better view of it than we did. Looks close, but you know something? No. Nope. He almost pulled a Michael Jackson there and has his body moved away. Most of you know, it moves in a way that most people don't. I mean, it's unbelievable right there. I thought for sure he was going down, but he kept the knee above. And again, the officials on top of the play have a better view. And again, makes the right call. You could have stuck a blade of grass between <laughs> his knee and the ground, but he did not touch. Lost it on first down. Stallworth, great catch over the middle. And he knew he was going to get drilled, and he holds on to the football. And a penalty is going to go against Will Offenhofer from Tennessee, making a horrendous play downfield. Not necessary. Plays over. It's an extra block when it's not needed. Trying to intimidate someone, and it'll cost his team. Nullify a terrific catch by Dante Stallworth across the middle. Took a bunch of big hits, and then right at the end of the play, Offenhofer with a late block. Mm. Dead ball. Personal foul. Late hit on the offense. Your first down. Tennessee has not been penalized often, but a costly penalty for the Volunteers in the fourth quarter. Because it'd be first down, and they'll spot it from where they made the yardage, where Stallworth ended up with the catch. But it now will be first down and long yardage. A beautiful catch by Stallworth. So he knew that Cumbie was going to drill him. Yep. Wadsdale was on the other side, and they just hammered him, and he still held on to the football. Tennessee was just very lucky because they, they, they gained so many yards. Marking it back off didn't hurt him as much as it might have in terms of yardage. The ball is at the 34. Tennessee trailing by a touchdown early in the fourth period. Stevens trying to get untracked and having a very difficult time of it again as Chris Gayton leads the Kentucky defense once again on the tackle. Yeah, and Travis Stevens came with this game, David, just needs 71 yards to go over 2,000 for his career at Tennessee. But today, he's had nowhere to run. Nowhere to run. Where's Martha Reeves and the Vandellas when you need them? You know, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. But he was hidden under a bunch of Kentucky blue shirts and helmets after that play. Nice job by David Johnson to turn him back to the inside where he had some help. Exactly. Great point. Second down for the ball. Washington gets the first down for Tennessee at the 44-yard line. Derek Tatum was there to make the stop for Kentucky. The same play that Kelly Washington scored the touchdown on. Quick hitch pattern, and he turns to the sideline after the catch. But on this play, Derek Tatum makes a nice open field tackle and drops him on the spot. Last time, he was able to spin out a buoy tackle and go down the sideline for a touchdown. 
And, you know, Bowie's on the op on the wide side of the field now. Tennessee in good field position. Would not be surprised to see them take a shot at him at this point. And it's Leonard Scott lined up across the line of scrimmage from it. The best speed in the conference, perhaps. Swing pass to Stevens, who slips, recovers, draws a crown of blue shirts. There's that uh, hard driving Stevens as he uh, fights his way for a couple of yards across the 45 to the 46. Guy Morris has to like the effort of his defense today. I mean, it's just been phenomenal. And John Goodner said that they've given effort on every in every game this year. There's not been a game yet that they haven't given good effort. He said the South Carolina game they got out of hand. He took the hit for that, said he gave him a bad scheme to prepare with. They got waxed by the Gamecocks early in the year, 42 to 6. Other than that, they've been competitive in every SEC game. Yeah, even Florida was 44 to 10, but they were still in the game into the third quarter. The protection. Stallworth at the 46-yard line of Kentucky, and it appears to be good for a Tennessee first down. That young man's something else. You know, if I'm gonna, if someone's gonna catch a ball as well as he catches it, break my wrist, okay? <laughs> Give me a broken bone earlier in the year and bring him back. He's just he's been something else since he's returned, and it's allowed Tennessee now to work both sides of the field because who do you decide to double up on, Kelly Washington? Dante Stallworth, and then they use Jason Witten down the middle. So that's a name that we really haven't called much today, David. Has not called a ball. Has not called a ball, and that's a surprise to me. Stallworth is uh, lined up, wide to the right. Clawson looking. He's looking for Stallworth deep. Just overthrown. Pretty good coverage by Derek Tatum. Nice job because he's able to fade Stallworth into the sideline, which helps, which helps Derek Tatum. That becomes an extra defender for Kentucky. Ball, beautiful ball by Clawson. Just misses outside. Stallworth had a chance to play it, but he really kind of runs out of real. See as he fades towards the sideline, Tatum's on the inside, so it would have been a very difficult catch. As you said, David, good coverage by number 21, Derek Tatum. Second and 10. They give up the middle, Stevens. The most running room he's had today, for sure, as Cumbie is able to ride him down after a gain of nine yards. Tennessee's offensive line doing a nice job to open up a gap, finally, for Stevens. Yeah, and, and the idea of taking their shots downfield helps open up the draw play. Good block up front by Will Bartholomew, the fullback, who doesn't get to carry it very often, but he will block with the best of them coming out of the backfield, the senior captain. Tennessee with uh, only two third down conversions today, and they got them both on the same drive in the third quarter. They flood the field to the left side. Watson overthrown. Fourth down, but now a flag is up. And it will be pass interference on Kentucky. A rather late penalty flag dropped on the Wildcats. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty for the And I think the question is, Charles, was the ball catchable? I, you know, David, at the end of the play, the ball was not going to be caught. So, but, but, but if the receiver had a chance, they got Anthony Wadger, number 24, at the end of the play, holding on Montrell Jones, the freshman. Watch him, on, watch him there. See him reach out and grab Jersey at the end. It's a ticky-tack one. But he did it so much, there was so, it was so obvious to the official trailing the play, it's almost as if the official said, you know something, that's going to be on film, and I get graded too. And, you know, and I have to call it, otherwise I'm in trouble with my supervisor. Anthony Watts did not need to grab him on that play. Now the ball was clearly going Good to be overthrown. But it is a first down and a big play for Tennessee. Lawson pump fakes going for Stallworth. A lot of contact again. Stallworth still catches the football. Touchdown, Tennessee. And it was Bowie out there on island with him. And this is just a tremendous football player, Dante Stallworth. Yeah, and I feel, I feel horrible for Jeremy Bowie right now. Came right back at him again for their big play. And David, you mentioned it, a lot of contact at the end. A little, a little chicken fighting, as they say, between the defensive back and the receiver. You know, someone's going to say one pushed off on the other. The official said no advantage either way. See him kind of hand fighting inside. Great play by Stallworth, and what a tremendous catch. Oh, man. Jeremy had... Bowie's thinking, what more do I have to do One arm to in make there. a play? 
And that's the not bad. A beautifully thrown ball also, which might have been lost uh, in the fact that Stallworth made such a great catch. But Tennessee has tied the score. 9.32 to play from Lexington. Southeastern Conference football is presented by Sitco. We know you. I was a multi-talented offensive star for the Tennessee Volunteers from 1973 to 1976. I was considered a triple threat as a running back, receiver, and punt returner. Two times in my career, I led the balls in receiving and rushing. I was voted All-SEC in 1974 and 1976. In 1977, I was drafted in the first round to the New England Patriots. Do you know me? Back in the Commonwealth, we're tied at 28-28 with 9.32 to play in the football game, and a whale of a football game it has been today from Lexington. There's a big man receiver and return man, Derek Abney, waiting uh, for the kick from Alice Walls. He's back near the end zone with Martez Johnson. Kentucky led 21 to nothing. Tennessee came back and tied it at 21. The Wildcats went back on top at 28-21, and now Tennessee has tied it again. Johnson, another nice return. Kentucky has been very effective in their kick returns today, and has given Lorenz a good field position. Let's check with Dave Baker on the sideline. David, the big question on the Kentucky sideline was twofold. Number one, what was the penalty? The line judge said it was a push in the back. The other question they had, was it in fact a catchable ball? The ruling by the official was that it was, and that led to the touchdown. Yeah, Dave, and I think the problem was with Anthony Wadja, he wouldn't have caught the ball, Dave. All right, it was it was a ball that you couldn't say wasn't catchable, but right. he would have never caught the ball. But Anthony Wadja clearly grabbed him with the jersey, and I think the official had to make the call. It was very unfortunate, because if he doesn't touch him, he doesn't make the play anyway. And Wadja, for his part, didn't know where the ball was. He no. didn't know the ball was going to be overthrown. He just knew his man was three yeah. yards uh, in front of him. And that's not supposed to happen either for a guy playing center field in a free safety. There He's supposed to know where the ball is. There you so, go. so all around, unfortunately for Anthony Wadja, who's played a good game, that could be a killer play for Kentucky. But they've shown a lot of resilience in this game, Dave, and they've always seemed to come back when things have looked, looked like they're going against them. Well, it appeared at one time that Tennessee might be on the mat for the 10 count. They bounced back. They had the momentum. Kentucky then rested it away from them, and now Tennessee back with the momentum. We'll see if their defense can hold Kentucky here. Lorenzen has had a fabulous day. The shovel pass there has not been a very effective play for Kentucky. On the two occasions that they've tried to run it, both times the ball was almost intercepted. To Jared Lorenzen in the pocket. Now they're looking to run the shovel pass they ran earlier, and about the same result. R2 Spinner took a big shot earlier in the game from Kevin Burnett, and now his backup, Keon Whiteside, hits in the same way. Again, drop the drop behind the line of scrimmage, or near the line of scrimmage. Give on yard, it's second and nine. Eight minutes, 50 seconds left. Allen on a quick toss. Kentucky has used that quick pass, screen plays, little pops up the middle, really kept Tennessee off balance all afternoon long. Great game plan by Brent Peace and the offensive staff at Kentucky. And Derek Smith told us before the game, Charles, that win or lose, he didn't know if uh, Kentucky could pull off the upset, upset, but he did know that Tennessee would know they had been in a ball game today. Yeah. That certainly is the case. Yeah, he said he wouldn't go out on a limb, but he believed that Kentucky would play an excellent game, and that they have. And they're running up and inside again, and he picks up the first down on third and one. Lott made the tackle, but Penner has been a bull all day long for Kentucky. And running again inside on the Tennessee defense. I know John Chavis is thinking, I've got an Outland Trophy Award winner from last year, who may be the first pick in the old draft next year. And they're still running inside. Albert Hainsworth, another 300-pounder. They're running inside on me. I'm not believing my eyes. Give the Kentucky offensive line a lot of credit. That's three or four games. They've been together, and they've worked awfully hard, and they're playing very well today. Lorenzen wants Allen, and short hops him at the 35-yard line. One of the Let's take a look. Balls. 
Beats that scoreboard. Big win for the Georgia Bulldogs on the road in Oxford this afternoon. And South Carolina playing uh, arch rival Clemson with the lead in the fourth period. Illinois has defeated Ohio State. And Georgia Tech leads Wake Forest in a big uh, ACC showdown. Well, Jim Grove's done a great job at Wake Forest this year. John Bunting trying to get their sixth win today against Duke and become bowl eligible for North Carolina. Yeah, great job by Bunting and that North Carolina staff also. Lorenzen on a quarterback draw to the 50. It'll bring up a third down and five for Kentucky. The Wildcats trying to use up the clock. Keep this drive going. Tennessee trying to get that football back. And uh, in a tie game like this, field position can be important. And right now, Kentucky's got that in their favor. Yeah, you got that. They've got the field position at midfield. You just did, now you don't want to make a mistake. Also, you know, if you're Kentucky, obviously keep moving forward, but you can't make a mistake here and give Tennessee something easy. Kentucky, 32% third down conversions coming into the afternoon. Much better today. Abney denied the first down marker. An excellent tackle by Teddy Gaines as Abney had it, needed about two yards and did not get the first down. Now Kentucky has uh, some decisions to make. Yeah, big open field tackle by Teddy Gaines, and I don't see any reason why Kentucky doesn't go for it here. Went for it earlier. Remember, they're not going to a bowl game. They want to win over Tennessee. Why give Tennessee the ball back without taking a shot at it? I think they go for it. Great open field tackle by Teddy Gaines on Abney. It's not easy to tackle that slippery guy. Well, this is their bowl game. This is it. I mean, <laughs> They've got the orange in the, the stadium, so call it their orange bowl if you prefer, but uh, this is their game that they're really playing for here today against Tennessee. Yeah, and they're letting the clock tick down again and calling timeout, trying to shorten the game. Kentucky using its second of three timeouts in the second half and will be back in a moment. We're tying it with 6-11 to play in the fourth quarter. It might be the play of the game. Fourth down and two for Kentucky at the Tennessee 47-yard line. Lorenzen to throw. He's scrambling. He looks. Penner incomplete. Tennessee takes the football at the 47-yard line. Great field position for the Volunteers. What about that play, Charles? Well, they were trying to run that crack screen again to the back, to the back, to looping out of the backfield. He looked to his right, and then he didn't have it. Now the receiver had to change his route. So does everyone else. They're in scramble mode. Tennessee, good coverage downfield, flushed him out of the pocket. I'm a little bit surprised in terms of Jared Lorenzen not being able to kind of bootleg out a little bit and make a quicker throw. But that's a play that has worked well for them all day. Hard to question Brent Peace coming back to it in this situation. Tennessee finally holding on defense. Huge play for them. And uh, the field position that we talked about a moment ago now in favor of the Volunteers. Play action. Clawson will keep. Clawson to the Kentucky 40 to the 38-yard line of the Wildcats. That's an element of Casey Clawson you don't hear about very often is him being able to run the ball. Doesn't have a lot of yardage because he takes a lot of sack yardage in terms of running, but he does have three touchdowns rushing for the season. Scored one against Notre Dame. So, so here he is now flushed out of the pocket, gets upfield, and you notice he knows how to preserve his body. Gets down before the big hit comes. First down for the Volunteers. Watson going deep, Star is out there. Touchdown, Tennessee. Dante Stallworth, the big play man in this Tennessee offense, and you wonder how they ever got along without him, Charles Davis. They probably would not have lost to Georgia, would you think, if Stallworth is on the field that day, although give Georgia great credit, but yeah. this guy is so good, it's scary. It, it, he is very good. He is very good at what he does, and what he does is bring him that added dimension of confidence, toughness, and will catch the ball. Now, this play was made over a freshman, Mike Williams, who came into the ball game and replaced Jeremy Bowie. You know, Jeremy Bowie obviously having a tough time today. They replaced him with a freshman, a true freshman, and Dante Stallworth just licked his chops and said, bring it to me. And Williams was a high jump champion in high school, but not much he could do about a great throw by Clawson and an outstanding catch by Stallworth.
For the first time this afternoon, the Tennessee Volunteers are in the lead in Lexington, Kentucky. 5.26 to play. And number six, Tennessee, battling back from a three-touchdown deficit. Goes up on a beautiful pass from Clawson to Stallworth. And now it's Kentucky's turn to try and uh, respond as uh, they have moved the ball effectively all afternoon long, Charles. Surprise, it's just to Abney, although Michael Johnson makes great returns earlier. Abney. At about the 21-yard line, and that's where Kentucky will have it first and 10. Let's check in again with Dave Baker. David, one of the most impressive things this afternoon, I'm sure Philip Bumble has plenty to say this week about his team's performance today, but the one thing that has been a constant has been the composure of this Tennessee staff, and that's translated into this offense here in the second half. You haven't seen a lot of gyrations down here. We heard Philip Bomer say at the half, we just need one more than they've got, and right now if his defense can come up with a stop, they've done just that. It is a huge possession on both sides of the ball. Kentucky needing uh, seven points, and Tennessee looking for the big play defensively. Allen. And there it might be for Tennessee. It's a fumble, and the Volunteers have recovered it, but they're going to say he was down. They'll bring it back. That's why they're calling him down on the play. I know Phil Fulmer won't be happy with that. Eddie Moore, number 37, the linebacker, stripped him on the play. And let's go back to earlier in the game. Remember he tried to do that to Jared Lorenzen when Lorenzen was carrying the ball? Great tackle by Moore. I don't think there's any question the ball stripped out. I, I, I'm not sure that he could, you could call him down here. Ball stripped. That's a fumble. That's a fumble. And no question about it. But Kentucky, which was upset about the call against Wajda, now sees a benefit. Now is the beneficiary of a call that should have gone against them. So sometimes these things have a way of evening out. The ball goes through the hands of Derek Smith, incomplete. Lorenzen and Smith, high school teammates, but unable to connect here in this uh, fourth quarter play. Look at the quarterback comparison. Flossen, very slow to start this afternoon, but he has really come on strong in this second half. And both of these young sophomores have played spectacularly today. And you might have to, you might even say that Flossen, his day has made more spectacular because of the lack of a running game. You know, they haven't had to be able to run the ball. Normally they run it well and pass it, but today his arm has had to carry chemistry. And a huge third down conversion for Kentucky as Adam Boone, Aaron Boone rather, makes the catch his first reception of the afternoon. He has been a young man and has been coming on strong and a big play by Boone. Yeah, junior college transfer out of Utah. Was a high school quarterback. Didn't play receiver until he went to junior college. Caught 81 balls. It's no junior college. And now he's coming here and is having some success in this wide open offense of Brent Peace and Guy Morris. Five wide outs for Lorenzen. Touchdown, Kentucky! Two yards on the play, and Lorenzen threw a strike. If there's ever any evidence that these are not the Wildcats of old that would have folded and gone under, you know, if there's ever any evidence that Guy Morris's tough offseason and great coaching in terms of getting his kids together has taken root, we just saw it, David. We just saw it. They were down at every opportunity not to come back, and they did it again. This baby is not over, obviously. The left footer Hanson ties the game at 35. And a senior, Anthony Kelly, one of 22 seniors playing in their final game in Lexington, Kentucky today. And those young men do not want to surrender to the sixth-ranked Tennessee Volunteers. No reason for them to do so because they've gone head-to-head, -head, helmet to helmet, toe to toe. Let's try out all the cliches all day long. They told us yesterday, David, they believed. I'm not sure we believe them that they actually believe, but they did it. And what a great throw by Lorenzen. Anthony Kelly, wide open. Julian Battle, number 14. I mentioned earlier in the ball game, Tennessee's defensive backs are all terrific athletes, but sometimes they don't show great ball skills, meaning knowing how to move towards the football and break up plays. Battle just doesn't get there. 
<laughs> Not that for a senior, huh? That yeah, angle getting yeah. over there and a great throw. And the other thing about it, Charles, was there aren't many quarterbacks that, are, that could have gotten the ball that quickly no. into the hands of the receiver. And his arm is so strong that he beat the defensive back battle to the receiver. Battle couldn't get there in time because of his cannon. And then after the touchdown pass, he almost beat the ball downfield chasing his pass, <laughs> didn't he? The big fella showing some nimbleness getting downfield. What a great throw. Both quarterbacks, four touchdowns today. Uh, just a tremendous effort on both sides of the field by Clawson and Lorenzen and uh, and only sophomores. Are we at the stage of last the team of the team of the ball last to win? It might be. We're at the 353 <laughs> mark. And one of the best games that I've seen in a long time here today in Lexington. Yeah, if you can't have fun with this one, they take that pulse, right? <laughs> and uh, a sellout crowd having a, a great time as well, although I'm sure the Tennessee faithful are just a little bit uneasy. They have so much to play for. Regarding the BCS rankings and a, a huge game for Tennessee. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Guy Morris in his first year as head coach of the Kentucky program and what a job he has done. His players... Well, they love him. They love the coaching staff. They're playing hard. There's no guarantee that Guy Morris will be back next year. And uh, <laughs> I think these young men are trying to make that a done deal today. Yeah, they just, they just take a vote of the kids. I don't think there's any question he'll be back next year. Scott, with that big play capability, driven down at the 35-yard line. A wonderful return by Leonard Scott. Let's go back to the Pizza Hut scoreboard and check out the other action today. Georgia did beat Ole Miss. That is a final in Oxford. South Carolina did hold on against the South Carolina. Big win for the Southeastern Conference. And Arkansas and Mississippi State are 7-7 at the half. The other game uh, in progress involving an SEC school. And that's the eighth win in the regular season for South Carolina. The first time they've done that since 1988. Hats off to Lou Holtz and his staff. The injured player is Corey Larkins, dinged up on the return by Leonard Scott. Tennessee with such uh, explosive playmaking ability with Clawson's arm. You know, to Leonard Scott appeared to have a better a better opening to go a longer way. But Stephen Scaldaferri, the kicker, number 90, who has made a tackle on uh -huh. kickoff coverage already today, he got out in front of him and forced Leonard Scott back inside where he got some help. He's a physical kid. Yeah, he, he, he and Pacalac. And uh, once again, the, the big playability of Tennessee has to strike the fear in uh, these Kentucky fans that are so exuberant right now, but Stallworth has made uh, one big play after another. And eight catches, three touchdowns already for the junior from Sacramento, California. You notice in the Kentucky secondary, too, Mike Williams, who had come in for Jeremy Bowie, number 14, the freshman who was victimized on the last play. They got him out, and they're going back with experience, Jeremy Bowie. You know, the coaches have told him, hey, we got confidence in you. Go out there and play hard. Now he has a chance to be a hero. No one will remember the rest of it if he makes a play here and gives his team a chance to win the ball game. He can wipe out a whole afternoon's worth sure. of stuff with one play. And uh, Bowie is a senior, one of those 22 seniors we talked about. So you'll put it in the hands of uh, the more experienced player with 341 to go. It's Washington lined up opposite Bowie. Did someone jump for Tennessee and called, put, drew him off sides? I think it was the senior, Fred Weary. And uh, big number 70 jumping the gun. That'll cost his team five yards. Get ball. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Two first down. Number 70, Fred Weary in the middle of your screen. And you know something? Once you get all that, all that weight moving, once you get it moving in one direction, there's no calling it back. An offensive lineman, you know, if you just switch up there, they're going to call a penalty on you for a false start. First down and 15. That Kentucky's just showing blitz there, David. Lawson steps up. 
the fullback Bartholomew, and he steps out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Will Bartholomew gets his first reception of the afternoon. Great Tennessee tradition. His grandfather was on that 39 undefeated Tennessee team that went to the Rose Bowl, and Will would like to see his volunteer team get out there the Rose Bowl at the end of this season, but there's some business to attend to and a lot of other things that have to happen in Tennessee's favor for that to occur. Yeah, what a great play by Clawson. We've talked all day about Lorenzen using his legs to create time to throw the ball. Clawson did that and then showed a terrific touch, dropping it in to Bartholomew. Stevens. Cuts to the outside. Shakes away, away from Johnson. And picks up good yardage on first down. Stepping out of bounds at the Kentucky 41-yard line. Wiggins made the tackle for the Wildcats. Yeah, his stat sheet will not be a great one. This is not a day to remember for Travis Stevens. But how many times have we seen him shake off the first tackler and make extra yardage for his team today? David Johnson is a sure tackler, an excellent tackler out of the secondary. Travis Stevens able to shake him and pick up about eight yards on the run. Well, Stevens, uh, his low for the year, 63 yards at Notre Dame. He has only 46 yards so far today. But he gets the call again, and he got a great block on the corner. Turning downfield at the 35, and run out of bounds at about the 27-yard line of Kentucky. And you've got a tired Kentucky defense on the field. Patrick Wiggins, another sure tackler, missed another one. An open field against Travis Stevens. These guys, as Guy Morrison say, they're gassed right now. Because they've had a long season, they're undersized, so you get worn down playing these big teams in the SEC. And right now, Kentucky's got to find it in them. You know, to marshal up their forces and their strength and make one last stand this afternoon. And Stevens has to feel relatively fresh. He's averaging, what, 29, 25, 30 carries per game. He's only carried the ball today 14 times. That's like a day off for him. Exactly. You know, it's like a day at the beach for him. Well, he's got fresh legs. of crossing, going for forward. What a catch. What a catch. Oh, he did not hold on. Good call by the official. They're right on it. Oh, I thought, I he, thought he pulled it in. But again, he goes past Jeremy Bowie, number 38. A beautiful touch pass by Clawson. Dante Stowers, one of the few times he's been able to come up with the catch, but it would have been a difficult one if he had hauled it in. Look at the beautiful ball that Clawson throws. Puts it in a great spot. Knocks with one hand. Great call by the official on target because he didn't possess the ball across. You know, people test it and say, well, he's over the goal line. It should be a touchdown. You have to have control. You have to have control. Almost got it, but didn't do it. And he knew it. And it is second down for the Volunteers. Stevens. Incomplete. It'll be third and ten. Tennessee has not thrown an interception. They have not fumbled the football. They have played uh, really almost a mistake-free game with the exception of a couple of bad penalties. Yeah, their mistakes have been in, in, in execution. Mm -hmm. You know, it hasn't been mistakes of omission, it's been mistakes of commission because they haven't made the plays they normally make today. Although, as Philip Fulmer said, all he cares about is being one point ahead at the end of the game. Now they're in position where you're thinking field goal, too. You can't get a touchdown. And they've got a kicker that can get the job done, and Alex Wall will be back. Back in Lexington, there is uh, the man that everybody is looking at right now on the Tennessee sideline, Alex Walls, a Groza Award finalist. And it could be on his right leg in which this game uh, is determined. And Kentucky players can hardly watch from the other sideline as they have played their hearts out today in Lexington. But Tennessee with the ball third down and 10 at the Wildcat 28-yard line. Quick as Kentucky can strike on offense, I'm interested to see what Randy Sanders calls here. Because I don't think he wants to kick a field goal. Don't think oh, Tennessee oh, calls timeout. David, and that's, you know, that's unfortunate coming out in the wrong formation after a timeout. Yeah, that's uh, not going to be a popular thing over there on the Tennessee sideline as Fulmer waits for Clawson to arrive and Randy Sanders uh, talking with the quarterback. You have a timeout. Kentucky used the timeout. You had all that time to talk about it, and then you come out and get the wrong formation. Yeah, that's, that's not what you expect coming off of a timeout. That's, that's the time you use to get everything set, all your strategy, and you come out and you don't get lined up correctly. That's a tough one. 
the co Kentucky coaches on the sidelines, everyone into this game. This is one of those games that the cliches kick in about, you know, are there any losers? Not Especially not from the Kentucky side, but they want to win on the scoreboard. To Tennessee here, I said it before just a minute ago, David, I think that Randy Sanders is thinking seven, not three, because of the way Kentucky can strike on offense. That may change what he calls as a play. I don't think you'll see the draw here. I think Tennessee will throw it. Right now, Walls is looking at about a 42-yard field goal. Well within his range. Incomplete. Batted at the line of scrimmage. Demery, I think, is the man that got a hand on it. And it'll be fourth down for Tennessee. How about a taste of the medicine back at Tennessee? Remember, Tennessee has batted down or tipped four balls against Gerald Lorenzen today. For the first time today, Casey Clawson gets, gets his batted away by Chris Demery, and it almost turned into disaster because what happened? That's Derek Johnson, number 55, the inside defensive tackle who got it, got his hand on the ball. Ball gets tipped up in the air. What can happen, David? Interception. Tennessee very lucky that doesn't occur. And Walls comes on to, to attempt a 44-yard field goal to put Tennessee into the lead. It is long enough. It is good. Alex Walls, he has made from 44 this year, from 42, so that matches his uh, season-long field goal. And he had plenty of leg and the accuracy to put the balls up 38-35. was like almost a high lob, shot, lob wedge shot on it from a golfer, didn't it? But just right down, you know, pretty good accuracy on that one, almost down the middle, no question he made it. 44 yards, Alex Walls, aren't they happy that that guy decided to walk on at Tennessee instead of going somewhere in-state in Virginia? Those four miles <laughs> could have made a big difference in terms of where he lived, being that close to the Volunteer State. And now, you know, the tough part for, for Tennessee's defense is they're just as tired as Kentucky's defense has been. Well, they're, they're still 249. Be there's 249 they've been on, on the, the field clock. a lot more than uh, Kentucky's oh, defense yeah. has don't, been. Don't go away, folks. I mean, Tennessee, the last time out, had a big, had a, had a coverage bust. Julian Battle doesn't play the ball very well, and Jared Lorenzen drops it in there. we got a long way to go. Well, I think you're right uh, on what you said just a moment ago, that Philip Fulmer and Randy Sanders were thinking touchdown, yeah. not field goal. And, with 2.48 to play in the ball game, that is way too much time to give Lorenzo in this Kentucky offense. And they need good coverage on the kicks. You mentioned on the last return by Abney, David, that they've done a great job all day long. Kentucky has on the kick returns, and that's giving them good field position. Tennessee needs to get down there and stuff them inside the 20 for once. He was the freshman of the year in the Southeastern Conference last season. He broke six freshman NCAA records. And he would give it all up right now for a victory against the Tennessee Volunteers. Arch rival, Jared Lorenzen, a Kentucky kid. And he, as well as anybody, uh, wearing the blue of Kentucky, knows what a big uh, ball game this is here in Lexington today. And he catches it out of bounds, so that'll give Kentucky the football in excellent field position again, as they have had for much of the afternoon. Dave Baker on the sideline. What have you got? Guys, I guess the big question now is if you're John Chavis, do you continue playing that press man coverage? And Jared Lorenzen has shown an ability to make the right decision against the man when he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage, or do you go to the dreaded prevent that uh, many who follow football hate in the final minutes of games like this one? Well, and let's go back to the Georgia game, Dave, and talk a little bit about prevent defense, Charles no, Davis. No prevent. I don't see Tennessee <laughs> doing that. They've been in that spot before. They might play what they call cover one, and when they go man-to-man, -man, leaving a free safety out in the middle of the field to hopefully cover up any mistakes. But I don't see them going backing off and giving Lorenzen time. Abney unable to bring it in. It'll be second and ten. What I just saw on that possession, on that snap, was a two-deep zone. Two, 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 two guys deep, five men under, trying to cover up on the shorter routes and keeping two safeties deep just in case something breaks. I really don't, yeah, I cannot imagine John Chavis going to prevent in this situation. He wants to still bring pressure up front. Let's see if big John Henderson or Hainsworth or Overstreet up front can rush the passer. The protection for Lorenzo, he goes to Abney. Abney brings it in at the 49-yard line of Tennessee. A first and 10 for the Wildcats with 2.31 to play. 
It has to happen with this type of coverage for Tennessee. But they've got to play hard on the corners and not let the receivers get free releases. Tennessee has a, has a player down. Another big catch by Abney. And Albert Hainsworth has been playing very well today for Tennessee. He's down on the turf now for the Vols. They've been playing well the last four or five weeks for the Volunteers. You couple him with uh, Big John Henderson in the middle for Tennessee. And they are certainly one of the better defensive tackle combinations in the Southeastern Conference. But now Hainsworth is on the field with 2.31 to go. And his team trying to keep Kentucky out of the end zone. The Wildcats now over the midfield stripe at the Tennessee 48-yard line. You have to start thinking uh, field goal now for them as well with Seth Hansen, the left-footed kicker for the Wildcats. Well, he's made by Seth Hansen, his long field goal of the year has been 37 yards. I think he's got more leg than that. Well, his That's career long is 55. Yes, so. he's, got, he's got enough leg if they get him into a spot. Sure. But he hasn't had to kick a game winner yet this year. Hainsworth able to jog off the field under his own power, but uh, the bad news for Tennessee is he has to come off the floor, off the field, and it's big number 58 checking in for him, John Moore, who has made some big plays has, today. Yeah, he has, and but we have not heard big 98's name called in a no. while, making a big play collapse in the pocket. Here's where they need the senior All-American to make one at Kentucky's O-line. They've got a pass block better than they ever have. Lorenzo, that uncanny ability to scramble three, but the pass is incomplete at the 25-yard line. Intended for Cook. And it was Battle who got there just uh, in time to make a fine defensive play. Yeah, Julian Battle, who was victimized on the last play, arrived just in time. I think it was a good play. Yep. You know, Kentucky fans will argue it, but I think it was a good play because he got there as the ball got there, and he's got to feel a lot better about making that play. Remember, he gave up the touchdown that tied the game up previously. So, you know, even, even the Boo Birds are somewhat muted after having seen it on the big screen. It was a good play by Julian Battle, be able to keep his focus after being burned before. Now this second down play in 10 for the Tennessee 48. Kentucky with five receivers out, and they toss it to Hart. The tight end, first down, he fumbles. Tennessee's got it at the 31-yard line. And uh, it's volunteer football. Well, it was very close for Hart to his knee being on the field. But Tennessee has it as it popped loose. And the balls take over a big play for the Tennessee defense. Remember, they stripped Dougie Allen of the ball earlier and didn't get the call. Now Chase Hart going downfield. There's a tackle downfield. You see Andre Lott, number 30, involved in it also. And Will Overstreet, the defensive end who had rushed the passer, turned around and ran downfield and recovered the fumble. Good hustle by John Chavis's defensive line. And clearly the right call on the fumble. Tennessee with possession yeah, and a three-point lead. Chase Hart caught a touchdown pass earlier, David. Remember, he dropped the one in the end zone, got hurt, and now had a chance to make amends and ends up fumbling on that play. And it's Travis Stevens' time as he steamrolled Anthony Wanda and picks up a big Tennessee first down. We are at the two-minute mark. Kentucky has only one timeout remaining, and Tennessee protects a three-point lead in Lexington. Now, with Philip Fulmer, the ex-offensive line coach, as the head coach, is telling Mike Berry, his, his guards and tackles and centers coach, I mean, centers and guards coach, and Doug Marone, his tackles and tight ends coach, I want people knocked off the ball right now. I want two hands on the ball for my running backs. I want to run this clock out. This is what Tennessee did to South Carolina last year at South Carolina, where Travis, uh, Travis Henry went in for the winning touchdown. Now they just want to protect the lead. And here's the man that can do it as Stevens stays on his feet across the 45. I think they're going to say his knee hit the turf at about the 46-yard line. Jeremy, Jeremy Bowie tripped him up. But it'll be second down, and the clock continues to run. Kentucky can only stop it one time. And the Wildcats, who have fought their hearts out today in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. The offensive players can only watch from the sideline and uh, perhaps dream about what might have been. And yeah, they have to make a play here. They have to try and knock the ball out of Travis Stevens' hands, but sometimes something can pop, you know, if, if you get through the front wall because Kentucky's going to stuff the offensive front. Stevens, who, in addition to being able to pick up a lot of yards uh, with a lot of carries, 
does not have a reputation as a fumbler. He he keeps possession of that football. And I was wondering when Kentucky was going to use that timeout. <laughs> and there it is with 45 seconds to play. And Tennessee clinging to a three-point lead in Lexington. SEC football has been brought to you by BMW. Visit your local BMW center for a test drive. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. By Payday. Can't get enough peanuts? Get a Payday. Sweet caramel and tons of salty peanuts. By Pizza Hut. So much variety. The best pizzas under one roof. By Choice Hotels International. The power of being there. Go. And by Chevy. The cars you can depend on. The cars that last will be there. Back in Lexington, where the Wildcats and the Volunteers have battled from uh, the very beginning, and it's been one whale of a football game. Kentucky jumped out to a 21 to nothing lead, and uh, the Wildcats had a chance, perhaps there in the end, but Harps fumble, perhaps sealing their fate. Tennessee taking the football. It is third down and five, and Kentucky cannot stop the clock. Travis Stevens came into this game needing 71 yards of over 2,000. I believe he's finally got that, but it's been a struggle all day long. One more big carry for him coming now. If he gets the first down here, then that would be something because it got hit behind the line. And now the clock doesn't stop because Kentucky can't stop it, so Tennessee will run it all the way down as far as they can. The play clock has not started. Now it does. There's four seconds difference between the play clock and the game clock. As you see both of them in your uh, screen, Travis Stevens unable to get the first down, but time is on the Volunteers' side, and uh, you can't say enough about the effort. Lorenzen was tremendous today, so was Casey Clawson for Tennessee. Yeah, bo both of them were just fantastic. Both of these teams' efforts were fantastic. Tennessee did not come ready to play, David. They were not ready to go in the beginning of the ball game. Well, I thought there was four seconds uh, between those two clocks, but it turned out to be only one. Man, we had a disparity earlier in the game. There may be more time on the field than there is up, up on the scoreboard. Here comes an announcement now. See? Five seconds. See, that's what happened earlier. You know, we, that's, that's why the official time is kept on the field by the, by the head of referee. But both of these teams deserve a lot of credit. Tennessee wasn't ready to go in the beginning. Kentucky was. Mm -hmm. And then it flipped around. Well, now it's time to look at the BMW Ultimate Drive of the Game, brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. The Tennessee Volunteers needing a touchdown late in the football game. A two-play drive culminating in the stalwart 39-yard touchdown catch from Casey Clawson. And that is our BMW Drive of the Game. The Tennessee Volunteers on the ropes here in Lexington. That's what great teams do, Charles Davis. They find ways to win. Yeah, they did, and they, they found a way. You know, down 21 to nothing. We did say they'd been there before, David. No panic on Philip Fulmer's side. Of course, they were pretty forceful at the half. I'm sure they were to try and wake the kids up and get them, some, get them to get their attention. And they obviously did that. Cole quick booms at Abney. Got to tackle him now. <laughs> He's one of the best. <laughs> this guy's something else. There's a lateral, and I believe it's a throw. They didn't call forward on that, so let's see how it plays out. Penalty on the play, and that's ball game. Yep. Penalty will be, I think, against Kentucky for a and block in the back, and so the football game is going to be over. And what a football game it was in Lexington. Philip Fulmer's Tennessee Volunteers given all they can handle by Jared Lorenzen and the Kentucky Wildcats, but Tennessee holds on to their credit. A close victory, but it counts in the win column nonetheless. And Tennessee now has won 17 in a row against the Kentucky Wildcats. The previous five times, Tennessee has won by an average of at least four touchdowns. It's the first time they have not scored 50 points in the last six times these two teams have met. Hard-fought victory. Came from 21 points down. Was the 21-14 uh, at the half? You know, so, I mean, you know, there, this has just been a heck of a day. Larry Ivey, the athletics director at Kentucky with Guy Morris. He's the guy who's going to make the call on whether Guy Morris retains this job. I have a feeling he will. Well, a great effort by his team. His coaching staff had a wonderful plan. They come up short against a great football team and the Tennessee Volunteers. Yeah. 
Let's go to the sideline in the field. Dave Baker standing by with a winning head coach this afternoon. Dave? Thanks, David. Phillip, you said at halftime you just needed one more than uh, than they had, and boy, what a comeback you guys had the second well, half. Well, we had a heck of an effort by our offensive team. Uh, I knew coming in here, you know, that, that they're good. They're really a good offensive team. I knew it'd be a challenge. I didn't think it'd be this big a challenge, but you got to give their kids a lot of credit and their staff. They had them ready to play. And I'm proud of our kids, you know, fought back and got it done. That's what it's about. One thing on the sidelines that I saw this afternoon, there wasn't any panic this afternoon when you when you got down by the three touchdowns. Everybody really kept about their net. Yeah, we did. We I, I thought the side the, the sideline was really good. The the dressing room was great. You know, we talked about all of the the possibilities. Obviously, they had a hard time covering us, and we knew that coming in that they'd have a hard time covering us, and we darn sure had a hard time covering them a lot. So that big old quarterback special, you know. And um, I'm, I'm anxious to see the film and see where, what all we can do to get better. But it's a good win. You can throw the records out of the out of out of the house when you play uh, Kentucky. Coach, congratulations. Appreciate the time. Take care. Casey Clawson is here with us right now. Casey, uh, big comeback for you guys this afternoon. Obviously, you were down. You found some situations that you could take care of in a man-on-man -man, uh, in the second half. Yeah, uh, we knew, you know, coming in the game, we got to make some big plays offensively. And uh, the first half, we basically just stunk it up. Uh, we really couldn't get in a rhythm. And, uh, you know, we need to open it up, spread the ball out a little bit. And the uh, second half, we did that. Uh, obviously, you know, we can't come in a game like this and play the way we, can't, we played. Uh, I give a lot of credit to Kentucky and the way they played. But... Uh, no, we're fortunate to win this game. We got to go back to practice field. We got to get a lot better. Yeah, coaches stay on you all the time about staying about things, but you had scored 50 points on this team for five straight years. Do you think you're maybe overlooking them a little bit coming in? I don't think so at all. I think uh, offensively, you know, we had opportunities and we just didn't make those plays in the first half. I think uh, second half we made some big plays. We got a lot of credit to Tech Kentucky. They came out, uh, executed, um, fought real hard, but. Uh, and in the end, you know, we got it done. Great players make great plays. And what about Dante Stallworth and what he's meant to yeah, you all the last few uh, weeks? You know, all those guys stepped up and made a real, real big uh, contribution to the team. And up its line, pretty great. Uh, Travis ran real hard and the receivers made plays outside. And uh, you know, it was a total team effort. Defense stepped it up and uh, we got to win. You get, you got to keep winning, obviously, but you, it's how you win as well when you talk about the bowl championship series. Concerned about what kind of effect this might have on things? Uh, not really. We feel that if we go out and uh, win the rest of our games, uh, we'll be where we want to be. But obviously, uh, we can't come out and play where we did, especially in the first half uh, today. We can't do that anymore. Casey, congratulations. Thank you. All right, that's Casey Clausen, the victorious Tennessee Vols, as they escape from Commonwealth Stadium with a 38-35 win, David. Thank you, Dave. That Kentucky team with those 22 seniors giving it all they've got today against a fine Tennessee football team. And that was one of those seniors, 55, Derek Johnson, walking off the field with his brother. And both played outstanding football today, but Tennessee comes away with the victory, 38-35 in the final from Commonwealth Stadium. Back after a word from our local stations. 